Welcome to Dungeons and Gamers, a one-shot adventure starring these amazing adventures, including Matt. Hi, I'm Matt, and I'm playing a tiefling sorcerer named Morthos Volketh. I have a bit of a shady past, and I'm pretty cagey when I meet new people, but I'm also pretty headstrong about my decision-making. And Teddy Chineris. Hi, I'm Teddy Chineris from twitch.tv slash Teddy Chineris. Uh, <laughs> I'm playing a, oh god, what is it? It's a half-elf paladin. His name is Rokuzin. Um, he's like, we're at a little little festival. I was like born and grew up around the area. And, uh, you know, I'm chilling, having some fun. That's, that's where we're at. <laughs> and Aaron. Hi, I'm Aaron. I am playing Cookie Kebler, a Kebler elf visiting this midsummer festival to discover new and exotic ingredients for the the corporateness. <laughs> she is a <laughs> bard wood elf. <laughs> and Beckers. Hey, I'm Beckers and I'm a bear. I was really expecting a roar there. And I'm playing the half orc <laughs> Fergus Bog. He's the prince of the kingdom of Faraway, and he's the greatest character in all the land. And <laughs> in charge of this entire universe and land, it is our dungeon mistress, Katie Quixotic. Hi, I'm Katie Quixotic, and you can find me everywhere as Katie Quixotic, and I do all kinds of stuff, but I'm just the DM right now. <laughs> <laughs> So, last session, you arrived at the village of Tanaba. You were there, some for the festival, some happened to be passing through, and the festival was sort of like an opportunistic thing. But for whatever reasons, uh, you arrived here, and you participated in some carnival games. You won some, and you lost some. Um, some people tried to give things to small children. Uh, it was a little bit of an awkward exchange. You know, whatever. Um... <laughs> <laughs> we will name no names. <laughs> we will name no names. None at all. Absolutely none. So uh, Cookie found an interesting uh, ingredient for to take home. So, you know, there were a lot of like milestones achieved in, in different stages in people's lives. Um, also, there was a well that did some weird magic stuff, but also was kind of like remotely attached to Timora, and she's a goddess of like fortune and boons. So that's why she has a temple called Fortune Boon Hall. And uh, after figuring out that that was all that the well was, and that it wasn't, in fact, the plot hook, <laughs> they continued on with the evening. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The adventure's well. not in the well, people. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they continued on for the rest of the evening. There were some dancers, there was a, a fire breather, and some pyrotechnics that went on. And towards the end of the pyrotechnic show, there was some sort of celestial activity that resulted in a, a great burst of light that lit up a large swath of the sky and caused alarm to some people. At which point, somebody began shouting about a prophecy, and there was murmuring in the crowd about the man who was shouting about the prophecy. So that's where we left off. It's uh, it's late into the, not late, late at night, but it's late into the evening. The sun is is set. Uh, it is dark out. There are torch lights that were already existing around as uh, the day started to progress and lights were lit for the evening. Many of them had been dimmed in uh, light of the light show that was going on to prevent the light pollution from dampening the show. But there are still some, so you're not completely in just, like, moonlit darkness right now. But everything is kind of difficult to see, and there's just this, like, moderate illumination over the faces of all the crowd as there's this panic whispering going on behind you, and you still hear somebody shouting off in the distance, um, not, not terribly far away, but somewhere within the crowd, the voice of a man that keeps saying, the prophecy I told you all, Prophecy, a warrior woman bathes in light. This is it. This is clearly what I came here for. And you thought you said you all said I was crazy. Now, if anyone will come help me save the end, save the world from ending, all I need are a couple of strong backs. And he's like continuing to yell about needing uh, people who are willing to be brave and um, like undertake this quest. And the, he, he told them all they, they would see in the end. 
Uh, and and you start to hear around you just like general murmuring, and you can pick up how a couple of the people at, at the the festival who seem to kind of be like from the town are talking about how like oh that's the one that was here last week, and he kept going on about something. Maybe there was something to what he was saying, and we all just thought that he was out of his mind. But oof, who knows? You know, there's like just a general panic, but like confusion, like. This is a world full of magic and interesting things happen all the time, but it's not like a dragon just burst out of the sky and started killing everyone. Like the night seems pretty calm other than this, this glow and the sort of like explosion or whatever it was, it's starting to fade at this point. Um, so it, it's not like there's like a panic stampede of people, but there are like frightened children and babies crying and just like a general unease on the crowd. And where the show either was supposed to end and the festival was supposed to close for the day or there there should have been something to wrap this up at the end. Like nothing is happening. It's just the crowd is just kind of being left to their own devices at the moment, it seems. And there's just just general chatter. Fergus uh, looks up at the sky at, at what remains of the uh light show that happened and then he kind of like uh slaps morthos on the back and goes their lights are a lot better than yours <laughs> god what a callback <laughs> what a fucking callback is brilliant i've been thinking of this for like at least a week <laughs> <laughs> why can't you do a light show like that <laughs> morthos exhaustedly looks at fergus and says can you please be a little gentler next time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sparkles. Uh, what was that guy going on about? That's probably nothing important. Th- can the bear I just go do something else? <laughs> no, this is out of character. Oh, okay. <laughs> if the bear is <laughs> just talking and not sounds, it's probably a hopeless hopeless we, should, we should definitely not investigate that. Yeah, yeah okay. Let's, go, let's just go find more fountains. Crazy. <laughs> let's go find more fountains. Let's go home. Ah, <laughs> uh, I see you have played D&D before. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to... Rokuzen definitely wants to go talk with this dude and find out what's going on. You know. Yeah, you I mean you grew up in this area, and this does not seem like anyone who's familiar to you. Not that you know every single person, but um, you don't remember hearing any like rumors about somebody coming to town and like regularly to talk about prophecies or anything like that. Uh, so seems out of the ordinary. Yeah, for sure. So you're going over to try to find the the man in the crowd. Yeah, I mean we're all together as a group. I mean, can I? I- I don't think Fergus the thinks that the, Fergus probably thinks that this dude's a little bit crazy and probably doesn't take it that seriously. So you might mm. wander off. I don't think he's in that big of a hurry. Okay. About it. I, well, I'm gonna at least tell you guys. Hey, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go see what's going on. If you guys want to join me, that's cool. But I'm gonna go talk with this guy. Okay, you do that, shiny man. Okay, have fun. So he starts to turn to leave and the the man is still shouting and he starts talking about, um, you know, saving the world and where's your adventurous spirit? These these parts used to be teeming with adventurers. All sorts of brave people were born here. There are legends about them and none of you, none amongst you. And he's just going on and on. Excuse me. Excuse me, what's up? <laughs> what's up, man? Uh, are you talking about adventures and shit? And like, I'm down for it. I mean, I need some money. What's up? Like, let's let's do this thing. How much cash you got? <laughs> <laughs> How much talking? cash you got on you right now? Right. How old would you actually, say? Actually, just uh, pull that sword. Hand me your money. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I'm not. I couldn't actually do that. But and this is when we find out he's a paladin of Bashaba. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no. Yeah. How old would you say your character is? Oh God. Let's say, like, 30. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Let's go with that. So you approach when you're, as you're waiting through the crowd, um, you know, people kind of move out of the way for you naturally because you have, like, an opposing, like, presence just by virtue of the fact that you have an armor and weapon and these are a bunch of peasants and their children. So they all just kind of, like, part the way as you, as you skirt through them and you get closer and what you see is... Probably he's a, like a human male. He is weathered like um, the sort of like rough skin that you get when you spend a lot of time out in the sun. Uh, there are a couple of like scars on his face, but he's got uh, very like trimmed hair that's really like co- like 
particularly combed. He's wearing robes. It doesn't look like necessarily like a caster, uh, but they are like road dusty, well traveled. He seems to like he moves around. He's not used to, um, or excuse me, he's not unaccustomed to um, travel life on the road. Is what you can like just surmise at a glance. This isn't like someone who's um, like clean and proper, but they're still well presented. Uh, and as you get closer, you see that he's got um, like a satchel down uh, on the ground, kind of like between his feet. And he's got a backpack on and there are like uh, map cases sticking out the back and odd bits of paper that are rolled up also just kind of like askew sticking out the back of um, his pack. And then in the sort of satchel in the ground, it's it's clearly a cloth satchel, but it's very distinctly square shaped. Um, and he, in the dim light, is difficult to see, but like roughly the size of what would be books appear to be inside, or maybe like a small chest, something square that's causing this cloth satchel to take on uh, like a square shape like that. And uh, you, inter- you know, excuse me, sir, sort of thing. And he turns around and looks at you suddenly like he's almost surprised. Ah, fighter. Or are you a man of faith? Um, more of a fighter. Let's go with that. You here to save the day? Um, possibly. What What do you know about the situation? Like, what what's happening? I came to town a week ago. No one here listened. I told them this was going to happen. There was going to be an event. I charted the stars. I read them for weeks. It pointed to this location. There's a history of this going on here. I'm sorry. I'm rambling. You weren't here a week ago. There's a prophecy. I uh, am something of a scholar. And he like gestures down to like the books at his feet and uh, back to like the paper and map cases and stuff sticking out of his backpack, rucksack sort of thing. I've spent my life reading through prophecies, little ones that have gone unnoticed by more important people. I try to find out where they came from, what they might relate to, track down anything I can to see them fulfilled, watch them unfold, stop them when they're bad. It's, it's been an interesting road and people often don't believe you. So it's nice to see that someone finally recognizes this is important work. This area has a history of celestial activity. The gods are always looking at it. Why would there be a temple of Timora in a place like this, out in the middle of nowhere? He seems like he's kind of like a place like this, which you could feel about however you would like, but it is like, hey, I'm from here. Like, all right, man, come on, stop. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a little bit of like, like a mild distaste when he says it, like you're out in the middle of nowhere, when it's, it's like not that like much of a wilderness or anything. And um, he says... Years ago, something similar happened, and a large piece of earth and rock fell from the sky, and the people took it, and they were able to remove from the dirt and the rock a stone that was said to be a blessing from the gods themselves. And there was a priestess who said that Something about uh, religious significance. The records are a little bit dim. But ultimately, what ended up happening was that this ended up being important. And it was taken by these these people that lived in the woods, apparently. It's like, I'm kind of piecing together information that I can find. So I'm not exactly clear on who it was that took it. But I know that they're in this area. And I know where I think they are because I have been tracking them. I'm not a fighter, though. I need somebody who can swing a sword to go in and take it. Okay. I can pay. Hmm. Okay, so I get the basics here, but how how do you know it's important? Like, hmm. I'm still not sure what exactly, like, what was the light explosion in the sky? According to you and according to your your books and your knowledge. Is that just a sign of what's happening or? Do you know anything about the constellations in the area? Uh, not a ton, no. So he, like, he, like, turns your shoulders and he points. And he's like, this one. If you look at these. And he starts, like, pointing at stars. It's, like, hard to tell which ones exactly he's pointing out. But he's, like, describing the way they look vaguely. And he points out 
a set of stars that form the constellation called the Warrior Woman. Um, and she has a sword that is drawn and it's clashed with a second constellation he points out, which is like a centaur. And he explains uh, like a historical event that... Go ahead and make a history check for me. Seven. Yikers. <laughs> Yikers. Okay. So he, he starts to tell you a story about how, um, you know, a couple hundred years ago, uh, there was a woman who was a renowned fighter uh, and a centaur who were having an arm wrestling competition in a local tavern. And when they began, just so happened to coincide with a celestial event that opened a tear in the fabric of like the realms and the planes were connected in some way and other creatures started to come through and they had to continue arm wrestling until people fought back this like incursion at which point they were able to stop. And the story seems a little silly and you don't remember hearing about this before, but he says it with such conviction that it's like, hmm, it's either a really convincing lie or this is something that actually happened, but it doesn't like, you don't have any recollection of this as being like valid or accurate. It just sounds like a story that somebody's telling. Yeah. And he starts to pull out like pieces of paper and he reaches down into his, his little like satchel and he pulls out a book and he starts flipping up through pages. And there's like a, a rough drawing of the constellation of the warrior woman that he had pointed out. And part of this is like, there are like three different styles of handwriting uh, as he's like flipping through pages that you can recognize. And then there's a fourth one that seems to be his like notes in the margins. And he starts showing you the, um, there was a priestess to Selene who claimed to have visions. Uh, and she was in the area in one of the neighbor neighboring towns. Uh, this was between, this, this town is between Tribor and Red Large. She was in Tribor, the larger of the two towns. And um, she had received a vision about um, the constellation not like coming to life, but that it was uh, lifelike and that her face was illuminated and that it was going to bring upon strife that might cause the end of the world. And they had, um, after they had located this like artifact, they were convinced that it was the key to uh, preventing it because there was some sort of... It, it was like heralding the sign of um, like some sort of like invasion, but it was unclear because she was having a vision. Like she had this this uh, feeling that there was like a wave about to wash over the area, and that somehow attuning this to Selene was what was preventing um, like visitors from somewhere else. And she wasn't cl clear whether it was another realm or whatever. And he's like reading off these notes to you and he's like taking out pieces of paper and it's all like, you're standing in this crowd of people and I people are starting to like look over his shoulder and look around you and try to like figure out what's going on. And he's like, he's got like papers, he's holding one up to you and another one falls and he's kind of like just jumbling, trying to like, this is all the information I've put together for you. If you are trying to do discern whether or not you believe him or he seems like he's off his rocker, then you could make an insight check. But if you are going to just, like, make the call to, like, see what he's, like, offering or decide whether or not you believe him, you don't have to make any rolls. The insight's one of those things that you, like, choose to do usually. All right. I'm just going to say fuck it. <laughs> and I'm going to say uh, if there is possibly, like, gold in it, then in it for me, then, like, let's go. Let's go see what this is about. Let's go check this uh this area that he says some people have taken this this artifact and let's just go let's go look around you know maybe maybe they are out there i he seems genuine you know is the carnival game still open this was like the closing sort of like ceremony for the evening so it you don't know, like you hadn't asked anyone whether or not the games would still be open necessarily, but you do know that this was supposed to be the sort of like grand finale sort of thing i think i think while uh roku is is uh talking th this uh fergus is off uh doing the hand axe thing going like i'm gonna hit it <laughs> like come on one more try let me do it <laughs> like, oh God, I, don't, I, love it. I don't know i don't know if someone's there or not but if if they're not then he's just kind of like shouting looking for somebody to let him let him try again <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and 
Okay, so you leave the crowd. Do you tell anyone where you're going? No, no, he's just he's just like bored by it. like he he doesn't think okay. that any of this is anything. So he's just like I'm gonna go back to the carnival. Okay, so um, like there's this general crowd around you, and you're easily able to kind of like move your way through it and out. You head across the. Um, the way the town is set up is they kind of have a lot of the stuff like off to the side, like this sort of entertainment stuff. The games were more towards the front. So you make your way through like a basically empty, like sort of couple of, now I wouldn't call them roads, but they're like lanes that have clearly been devised that intend to separate uh, like structures, like homes and businesses and things. And uh, you make your way out to the area where the carnival games were. And it's like mostly completely empty because even the people who hadn't been at the show, there was like people that had started walking over towards the end. And then when the thing happened in the sky, they all just kind of like stopped in their tracks. And so you passed several small groupings of people as you were like leaving them. And there's like, you can see a few people uh, like milling about over there and doing different things. So it's like unclear whether or not specific games are open. So if you want to make your way straight over to there, you'll find that that one, that one is still open. Ooh. Well, there's still somebody there. Oh. The gnomish man that you had spoken to before is kind of like, he's on the table now because he's like, look, appears to be like packing something up. He's like, folding up something in uh, like some cloth and he's got this big like I wouldn't call it like a chest but it's like a box that he's like closing up uh, and he's like locking it as you start to walk up I guess Fergus uh, goes up and we're like you still open? I mean we haven't taken it down but we don't have anything left to give you <laughs> what, what'd you do with all the toys? So festival of people. They're gone. Bale's been packed up. Uh Did I, you not see the explosion? Like the sky, the sky <laughs> blew up. <laughs> so doesn't mean we can't throw axes anymore. Did they take did the sky didn't take away the axes? <laughs> no, it's all right there. I can well, leave it for well, you for a while. If there ain't, if there ain't no toys, then I'm. He just like s stomps off, just kind of like, <laughs> and and just wanders back to I guess the group. I want a toy. <laughs> what are you all doing? So the paladin takes off one direction. Fergus takes off the other. Um, what do the three of you do while one is seeking entertainment and one is seeking quests? Uh, I'm gonna address Cookie, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, back at the well earlier, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to apologize for being so rash. Uh, you're clearly a talented caster, and just, I don't know, my, I just, my thoughts got away from me, and I just grabbed it out of your hand, that scroll, and, well, and then I, I look at Bear, and I say, I hope there's no hard feelings about that. Well, I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's a good roar. <laughs> the crowd kind of like all collectively jumps back in a circle around the three of you. <laughs> well, I I appreciate that very much, nameless man. <laughs> I would love to know what Beckers has these sound files named. <laughs> That one's called Neutral Bear Crawl. Okay. Neutral. <laughs> Wait, so you didn't even give him like a yes or a no? Like neutral. we're all good or we're still at odds? Just a neutral? Well, just... there's no happy bear growl that I could find. Oh. So what a bummer. Neutral bear growl is, is the best he's getting. There we go. I have a bear snore, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to whip that out. And <laughs> <laughs> really hey. waiting for the opportunity. <laughs> ne never know. Never know. Maybe you never she'll get put to sleep. <laughs> That's hilarious. I do have a question for you, though. Okay. No, let's hear Tell it. Tell me your name. <sighs> okay, go do that. You're, all right. You, you really want to know? <laughs> I do. <sighs> you can call me Morthos. It's my Morthos. It's my chosen name. Well, it's nice to finally know Morthos. <laughs> it's too bad uh, Fergus isn't around to hear this because he'd probably yeah. stop calling you Morty. That's good. 
I also <laughs> really wanted to know your name originally, so I'm not around to hear it. No, nope. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's beautiful. God Only one who it. knows is the person who did not ever ask. So that was a weird sky explosion. Right? But it sure was pretty. <laughs> that guy yelling, though, man. Yeah, I don't he know. He seemed a little nuts. <laughs> Would there be enough for somebody to, like, I don't know, detect magic or in some if they looked in the sky would they have an idea of what that was Can you tell me what do you want to use to try to figure out what it is I mean oh shoot do you want to see if you like you 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 don't have to tell me what skill you would want to use but if you're trying to de- determine the nature of something then I would like to know how you plan to go about it. So if you want to know if it was magical, you could definitely do an arcana check. If you want to know if it's like... air. <laughs> <laughs> you, you absolutely can smell the air. Yeah. I'm going to smell the air. <laughs> okay, go ahead and make, your, make yourself a yes. perception check with an okay. advantage, I think, because you're a bear. Uh, yes, I get an advantage off. No, come on. Yeah. <laughs> 14. It just smells like humans. There's lots of like human <laughs> things around. <laughs> It's a festival. There's like, there's the ever present smell of food, and it makes you almost a little bit hungry. And you're always kind of hungry anyway. Um, but it's just like good, good festival food, the sort of like greasy meats and stuff that are really like you never had before you joined up with, uh, with, a, I don't know if you were hung out with people before Cookie, but you never had until you started hanging out with humanoid types. And then it was like, well, this is why I can't go back to the wilderness. Obviously, this is way better. <laughs> <laughs> didn't we decide she was from a circus before yep i'm from a circus yeah but were you like raised from <laughs> yeah, a cub yeah. in the circus yes oh that's okay why, then never that's mind. why i'm super used to all those explosions and everything mm. there you go yeah that makes sense <laughs> super chill that's there. why she didn't freak <laughs> yeah there you go um yeah so it just smells like humanoids there's food and and people-ish smells I, I don't feel qualified to try and and magic it up. I could, yeah. So I'm, I, yeah. I don't think my okay. character would would go. Yep, I'm. Uh, I know what kind of magic that is. No, it's- yeah. But if you uh, if you're like a learned historian, you could make a history check to see if you've heard of something like this happening before. If you um, are a religious person, you could see if you are w- aware of any like religious significance to it or anything like that. I guess there's a level of like. I'm not sure how much I should know, but I guess a history check would tell me if I know it. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, he's pretty good at history. So I guess I will. Seven. I don't know shit about shit. I mean, you've heard all the time about lights in the sky and stuff that wasn't magic, but you also live in a world where the gods literally walk amongst people. And it's not like they appear to them as some sort of like um vaguely amorphous otherworldly being they literally turn into people like entities and like walk next to people and fight wars and stuff so Bears. stuff like this has happened all throughout history portals to other realms have ripped open and all kinds of weird stuff has happened so like you look at it and it's not like whoa this has never happened in the history of the world before but it's also like hmm uh okay uh Fergus Fergus has now come back from the the uh axe throwing thing and kind of like walks by uh Maz character whose name he still doesn't know. Um uh <laughs> just kind of like scoffs at him like uh Fergus Fergus does not like Morthos, uh, if that's not clear. <laughs> and um and go goes over to uh Roku and is just like Okay, shiny boy, you wanna grab a beer? Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm always down for that. But this guy's telling us about, tell him, he's been telling me about this whole, uh, something's really important. I still don't even fully understand. He's very complicated, this guy here. He's, he knows a lot. But I think the gist of it is, is that someone in these nearby forests has this artifact, right? That, like, we need to get or something real bad happens. He like interjects and he was like, it was stolen. That's the part I was getting to. These people came out of the forest and stole it. So we know that it's here somewhere. Uh, Fergus puts his like hand on the, the guy's shoulder. Did we learn his name? I don't know if we did. Okay, then. Yeah, he, just, he didn't ask. He just started guy, rambling. Guy's, yeah. guy's shoulder. Didn't ask, huh? Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's 
uh, and and just goes, "Are you crazy?" And I guess I'll roll an insight to to get a feel if <laughs> you on, on the person who is telling the story. Okay, yeah, perfect. on the person telling the story because <laughs> oh I assume God. he's going to answer, but then also Fergus is going to decide if his answer means anything to him. Yeah, yeah, so, roll your insight check. I'm totally gonna see Jesus which one of these words. Ah, insight four. I really, I don't. <laughs> oh, oh all no. those bad rolls. He looks at you, and he looks offended. His brow furrows, and his eyes squint a little bit. And he kind of puts his hand like, uh, like on his side as he leans over, like almost like indignantly, and he's like, "Why would I be crazy?" He's, he's he might point. he might not be crazy, but he's certainly a con man. He's trying to lead us into the dark woods at night so we can chase some treasure from armed people. Are you are is mm. are you more those are you, isn't snuck up behind at this point? Oh, I thought we yeah. were all back together. No, I I assumed that there's. Oh, I thought they came back to us. Whoops, my bad. Well, if you wanted to be with him, then you yeah. could definitely have trailed yeah. him through the crowd. Yeah, I don't think I would have though. In yeah, the- I think you guys <laughs> are still standing over because yeah. yeah, I guess I was thinking somehow they all we all I thought yeah, they no, all that, came back. You guys came back to that's us. fine. We'll separated. just add it into the <laughs> yeah, it, like if you if that's what you want to do, like so you like feel free to stop me at any point. If you're like I want to go over there and do whatever they're doing, then you can do that. Or we can assume that that's what you did, even if you didn't say it. Like in retrospect, I, we wanted to be back as a group at this point, so we're having this conversation all together. Whether, well, whether that's just because we didn't explicitly say mm. that, you know, when Fergus like walked by, you all kind of like looked at each other and we're like, well, I we guess we better follow him or whatever it was that happened that that caused. We got that. nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so you guys are with us now. Sure. Sure. Yeah, we tailed and okay. heard your exchange. Yeah. Okay. Oh hey! Didn't didn't see you guys sneak up here. Okay, <laughs> welcome back. So wait, welcome so what, what did what did Morthos just say then? Said that he's a con man and he's trying to lead us into the woods at night mm. to steal some treasure from some armed people. He like turns to you where his eyes had been opened, and he was like squints again. And he looks back to Rokuzin, and He's like, "I showed you the maps. I showed you the books. Tell him if you would like to make an insight check. You can." I trust him. Mm-hmm. I do. I don't necessarily know how to convince you guys, but I do trust that he's he's being sincere. I don't know why else he would look this frantic. <laughs> he must be a really good actor if he's really trying to scam us. I, I think something might be wrong. Okay, D- Teddy, did you tell me what the thing we're taking is? They want I don't think to- he told me. He told me it's a, a... he. Well, actually, he said it was a... Like, an, Basically, a stone, a meteor. It's a stone that fell from the sky. He's like uh, still standing there, like shaking yeah, his books. Yeah, like, <laughs> okay. And he finally, yeah. like, he, he reaches down. And when he had been talking to you, Rikuza, and you were like, So what's in it for me? was kind of like the part of the conversation you all had gotten to. Yeah. And he had like put his hand down, and that's when everybody else walked up. Uh, and he pulls out like a coin purse, essentially. Oh. And he like rattles it. And there's a little like metallic clank inside. And he's like, there you go, Morthos. I know how this works. Of course I'm going to pay you. And then Morthos sneaks up behind and grabs it and runs into the night. <laughs> oh, my God. And the adventure's okay. over. <laughs> okay. So there's gold in it for us if we if we want to go at least, like, check this out. We don't even have to do anything. We just gotta, we just gotta go look, you know? Maybe, well, if maybe... you don't bring it back, I'm not paying you. Well, but. yeah, I'm just saying to them, like, if we if we decide that along the way... We're not talking to way, you right now. Yeah, yeah, get, 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 this is the team meeting, okay? Um, so, so, like, if, so if, if on the way we decide that he is trying to scam us, we don't, we don't have to do anything, we don't have to deal with it, we can, we can move on, right? But if we do end up finding this stone, then, like, he's got a bag full of money for us. Who... Who has the stone? That's a question to him. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm I'm asking I'm asking you because like I have not been. He doesn't basic- know. He doesn't know. Uh, he okay. said that it's people in the nearby area. So like, I don't know how we even start that search. But how many people are we talking? 
Is mm. an army? Is Here, let's two? let's see if he has any more information about these people. All right, let's team team meeting over break. <laughs> um, no, no. <laughs> so so by the way, I don't I don't think I caught your name. What was your name? Good sir. Oh, are you talking to me? Again? Yes, I, I turned around. <laughs> team meeting over. Right. Like Teddy, like turns yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. No, no, he recognized that you had turned to him. Oh, it was more okay. like okay, a, I we're not talking to you right now, and he's like. <laughs> Uh, Fergus doesn't really like anybody who like thinks they're better than him <laughs> so Fergus is going to try and knock him down a peg with probably another shitty roll nine it's not a great one <laughs> it's not a great one but he kind of growls hoping to uh, to uh, knock him down a peg and be like you're not so hot shit like, you're not so hot shit <laughs> and it probably does shit all <laughs> <laughs> he turns and he looks at you and he's like you got something in your throat <laughs> <laughs> he fucking got you okay uh, go ahead Teddy or go ahead um, what was I saying oh yeah so what was your name by the way I don't think we, we caught that my name's I'm Rakuzin Vilness. Vilness nice to meet you nice to meet you so we're curious what do you know of the people that supposedly have this stone? Like, do you know anything about them? He starts, like, looking around the, like, mess of papers kind of, like, on the ground where he's, like, dropped a few in, the, like, the books. And he, like, reaches down and he picks up the spine of one and he looks at it and he kind of, like, tosses it to the side and he picks up another one. And he looks at the spine of that one and he kind of, like, nods and he drops the first one and he starts, like, flipping through this book so he starts, he's got like dog-eared pages and he's got like bookmarkers and different things in here and he starts flipping through them and he gets to a passage where it's like, he's taken a piece of paper that he's ripped out of something else and he's like pressed it into this page, like glued it in some way um, so that it's like here in his like book of notes and it's an account that he reads off to you. It's like bullet pointed account though. And so he goes through it and he's like, you know, they... They came and they claimed to be uh, trappers in the forest and they befriended one of the younger disciples. And through this, we believe some sort of charm effect, they were able to obtain, you know, the key, infiltrate, retrieve the artifact and leave. We know they came from the forest. We don't know whether they were rangers or druids, um, but they seemed like natural, the, the people that have like an affinity for the natural world. They had some magic about them. Or kind of like okay. the description. He's like, it's not like they knew who it was that came and took it, but, you know, this is the thing. And, and anyway, and then he points out, like, there's like a symbol drawn off to this side. Uh, and it's got like, it's, it's got like hatch marks almost. Like, 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 um, like it looks like it's intended to be like, uh, if you took like a knife and cut paper, so it's like lines that have like a bit of peeling on the edges and then a couple of circles around them. And there's a note where this is like a symbol that was found on uh, like, a, like an item they left behind, like an amulet or something. Um, it's like unclear. It said one of their belongings, uh, what it was, but it had the symbol on it. And he goes on to explain like, I, I tracked through the area. I've studied the accounts. I've looked through all the records. This is... I believe related to a group of, as they said, maybe like druids or something, who believed this to have significance for something that they were doing. This is this is the closest I know. But what I did find, and he like flips through another couple of pages, and it just looks like he's like he's either like a mastermind or he's that guy in the room with the red threads connected to everything. And mm. uh, he points to another paper where he's got like handwritten notes along with a couple of other like folded up pieces of paper. And he pulls out uh, what seems to be like a crudely drawn map. And he kind of like spreads it out. And since you're from this area, you recognize this to be like very vaguely topographically similar. There's like a like oblong circle that's like forest and like a circle for village or whatever. That's like really, really vague. He's got like lines where you can see he like went in one direction and like crossed it out. It was incorrect. And he started like traipsing through the forest in another direction. And then that's crossed out. And there's like two or three or four of those where it looks like he was trying to like track down um, these people based on like the symbols and the behaviors that he was starting to point out from these notes. And he's got one 
final sort of like path that's like drawn out and then like a circle next to this like really crude drawing of a cave that's literally like two like upside down U's that looks like the opening of a cave and like a, like a circle around that. And he is explaining like, they believe that this is significant to something for them and it has to be something related to this. And so I, I was able to, to trace the magical essence through, I don't know how familiar you are with these things, but anyway, they're this direction. Hmm. Seems simple enough. Like, we have a direction, we have a, a place to go, we have a goal, and we have money at the end of it. So, like, and we have a, a general description of what the people are, are kind of like, possibly, that have taken this. So, what do you guys want to do? Do you guys want to take this? Uh, I, actually, before I start saying this, I turn around and be like, give me one second. Uh, what was the name? Was Vilson, right? Vilson? Vilness. 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry. My bad. I'm, I'm bad with names. Be right Vilness, back. Just one second. Huh? And then I turn around, and then, uh, guys, everybody in, everybody in. And we Stop do another now, huddle, right? adventure's <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's true. Like, I know you're going to turn it into an evil one shot, but hey. <laughs> and it's so done. we're in another huddle, and I say, guys, so I, he, he gave us a direction. We know where to go. Uh, at the end of it, there's money involved. So do we want to go and and check this cave out what do you guys think i want to know more about this stone okay and if it's dangerous what he wants to do with it okay is it valuable is it more valuable for us to keep the stone rather Mm -hmm. than give it to him for whatever you know he's offering that's a good point Okay, so you want to go get the stone to do this, or you want to ask him about it? I want to ask him. Okay. Then. So we're yeah. in a huddle, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah we're, yeah, we're in the so, team huddle. Like, okay. I'm recusing. You should ask yeah. about the stone. Like, Wait, what's, not, what's he planning on doing with it? You're not going to ask? Yeah, I was going to say, you can ask if you want. I can ask if you want me to, but I mean, you can ask, you, too. You're the one that knows him. You've got the... <laughs> <laughs> You've got history. <laughs> All right, what, what do you guys think? Any other opinions for now? I'm Cookie. cool with learning more information. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Team, team huddle over again. Um, okay, so... Think, what about Bear? Bear, Bear, what what are your feelings on all of this, Bear? Bear is going to turn around, and I'm just going to do... I'm just going to, like, growl at him at Bildis. I want to do an intimidation, because I have really high intimidation. I've been trying to do this the whole time. Nice. I've been, okay. I've been looking for an opportunity. <laughs> See if you can intimidate better than I can. Yeah, I can intimidate way better. I'm going to intimidate Billness. I'm going to growl at him. Okay. Make an intimidation check. Okay, hold on. I'm going to growl at him. Ooh, that was vicious. 12. Yeah. So he's kind of like, he's like got his arms crossed and he's got all these like books and stuff in his arms and he's like tapping his foot and like looking a little annoyed at this point. Like, kind of, like, looking around to see if anybody else is taking interest. And, like, a mild crowd has gathered as he started to tell this story and people were paying attention. And he, he just looks, like, really impatient. And you you turn and you do this. Um, is your intent to, like, chase him off or literally just to, like, make him think twice kind of thing? Like, you don't advance on him or do you? It's totally up to you. I just want to make him think twice. I don't want him to run away. I just want him to, like... Be it's, straightforward. Yeah, are you are you okay. trying to go for the thing that I was trying to do of like maybe yeah. knock him down a peg? Yeah. Okay. Um so the minute that the massive bear turns to him and uh ferociously growls, he does that sort of thing that somebody does where their arms go up and all of their stuff goes flying. Nice. Um, so like papers go flying through the air, a book goes up and like opens up and there's all these pages that obviously have been stuffed with notes and all of these little, like folded up pieces of paper go flying out all over the place as he like throws it up the air and he's like, ah! Um, Fer- Fergus uh, look- looks at, at uh, Bear and is like, good animal and then takes takes some of his uh, rations that he's got in his bag and like, like uh, hands some to the bear <laughs> i'm i'm sorry happy about bear 
that illness. <laughs> I don't know why Bear decided to do that. I promise Bear's pretty friendly usually. You don't know Bear. <laughs> I, Bear does what I she wants. A few hours at least, okay? Like so far, <laughs> he's, my Bear's been pretty friendly. Bear. <laughs> yeah, like so far, upstate. Bear's been pretty friendly. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I we are still interested. In this I hope Bear didn't scare you away. Uh, she's really wanted you to know who's really in charge. <laughs> you know, if, if Bear really wanted to. <laughs> She could just <laughs> jump up and like rip your throat out, but like we're we're not gonna do that. I'm Bear's just saying that's what Bear would like do. Bear on the shoulder and say, "Don't say we're interested." <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, this is hard to get. I'm just like, <laughs> could, could so so. One of one of my friends here wants to know. Sorry again, sorry about Bear. I'm so sorry about all of this. Um. But one of one of my one of one of my companions here wants to know more about the stone. Wants to know, like, what is the value of the stone? Why do we need what? What? How much can why we do sell we need this to, for? Why do you need this stone? That's what I I'm curious. What's he gonna do with it? Yeah. Uh, what, what are you gonna do with this stone? Well, and he's like gesturing to all his notes out everywhere, and he's like, "There's a ritual." And it's supposed to stop a portal, but it's in this somewhere. Hmm. It's got to be done by tomorrow. So sorry about Bear. Yeah. It has to be done by tomorrow. Yeah, that was the Herald of the portal. Okay, okay, this is starting to make sense. Okay, so, okay. So the, the constellation lighting up, exploding, that's, that's a sign of this portal coming, saying, like, hey, this is on its way. Okay, I'm starting to get this. All right. What so, is the portal? He's he's looking around. You ask that question. He's like, it's a prophecy. I don't know what's supposed to come through it. Uh, mm-hmm. What if they're friendly? Yeah. <laughs> you don't, what if it's just I mean, like it friendly, could. friendly aliens? Doesn't seem like the friendliest way to approach, but... I mean, yeah, if you want to stake the entire world's existence <laughs> on that, so we all we all go. Hey, this is fine, and then go go to the inn and chill out. <laughs> go get we'll a drink and get drunk. <laughs> in scene, great one shot, everyone. <laughs> Have a great time playing. <laughs> I still want to fight something though. <laughs> but he's he's telling you this as he's like picking, he's like rifling through the papers on the ground. He reaches for one of the rolled up pieces of paper and he he unfurls it, and it's got um, it's got like it looks like a map of the full night sky. And he's like holding it up to you and um, he points to the like the region that you're in. This is the map in my I don't know. He points to the region that you're in and um, points to like a set of stars. And on this map, there are like really thin lines that sort of like draw the stars together to form the constellations. And it's it's really dark out here. So if you have dark vision, you can see it just fine. But if you don't, then you're having like a really hard time kind of like seeing what's on this map. But he kind of like holds it up and he points to one. And it's um, it's like vaguely in the area that you're in. He's like, the warrior woman, do you see this star? And he like points kind of like to the side of one of it. And so if you have dark vision, you can see this. But again, if you don't, then he's just kind of like pointing to a map of the night sky. If you have dark vision, you can see the outline of the the warrior woman constellation and that um, if you if you like look at the map and you see the directions and you know the region that you're in and you look up in the sky, it's kind of hard to like match things to to the other. But he starts to explain like which stars are supposed to be where and he's like pointing at the sky and he points to kind of like the area where the explosion happened. He's like, and that one's gone. It's not there anymore. Do you hmm. see? OK, yeah, yeah, I see Fergus uh, goes to Rokuz and like, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to this place in the woods and I'm gonna see if they'll pay us to beat the crap out of this guy because he's pissing me <laughs> off. Why why is he why is he pissing you off, Fergus? This guy thinks he is some hot shit and he's just trying to order people around. He, what, what, right, what right does he have? What has he done to make him think he's in charge? Fergus, is this because you tried to intimidate him and it, <laughs> it didn't work? It's okay. Like he's just people answering our questions, Fergus. Yeah, That's all he's doing. I'm just, uh, what you guys want to, I'm thinking of going and seeing if these guys want want me to beat him up and then we'll see do you want to come with or not 
I, Fergus, I'm probably going to come with you because I want to get this good. stone. Let's go. Let's go. No, talk I'm not to the... going to be, <laughs> to get them come on. to be for him, you to beat him come up. On, That's not why like I'm going. Hear you, I just Ryan. want the stone. No, I'm saying, I'm like, come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, like, you're I'm, being I'm, quiet. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying wh- whispery. I'm just, I'm just talking loud for the, the effect. Yeah. Yeah. Stage whisper. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think I think uh he's he's already just just kind of like uh going like I'm I'm going and then starts I guess heading into the woods. I would uh, assume he just based on him uh oh actually no fuck this a swamp. My I'm a natural explorer of a swamp, not a forest. <laughs> So unless there's some uh water in that forest, I I, I don't have natural ability there, but uh, um, so the way ranger works when you have your favorite terrain is you have like advantage on checks, but I think rangers at some level, maybe not at level one, but um, like you ignore difficult terrain and things like that. But you usually um, have like some kind of proficiency with navigation. Um, I know that you can like feed everyone. Yeah. Natural explorer. Let's see. That's my familiar. Yeah, I I picked my natural explorer as as swampland, so I'd just be able to do chill oh, shit in swampland. It is all okay. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Um, I guess I thought that that was like a general ranger thing, but you're usually um like you're proficient in survival, so like tracking yeah. your way through there and following a map would be a survival check. And I can, go ahead. Yeah, you want me to roll a survival check just to see if I can figure out where we're headed just based on what like circle he did. On glancing at the map, yeah, um, yeah. If you want to, you um, so when you make a roll like this, like if you're still if you're still having a conversation with the other character and you're trying to like describe it, then you could roll like, and they're going to help you. Then you would be able to roll with advantage. But if this is just you thinking in your mind of like yeah. trying to convince him and like I know where we're going already, then yeah, just make the straight roll. Yeah, I, I'm 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 trying to. I don't want to talk to the the guy. You know, the guy with the map, because obviously I'm I'm kind of want to beat him up. Yeah. So, yep. uh, we're L- I'm just insecure, seeing if I can. But that's Sixteen. Fine. That should do it. Okay. Yeah. You took a you took a look at the map, and he like was holding it up for a while as he was like explaining where you needed to go, um, like vaguely, uh, like the different paths he took while trying to figure out where yeah. these people probably were. And, it, it and could, I, I might have come in through this forest, so I might might have an idea of the layout. Yeah, or just in general, being the sort of person who like traverses the wilderness, like you're aware of this general area, you probably have your own actual maps. Mm. And so when you look at it, you're like, oh, okay. I mean, like, you know, the X number quadrant of the forest. So obviously, blah, blah, blah. You have like a good idea of where you think it would probably be just like in your mind, being able to like geolocate yourself, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I guess I'm, I'm just starting to walk that way. I don't know what they're doing. Cookie and Bear, could you guys follow Fergus and make sure he doesn't get in into too much trouble? We're we'll be right after. We just got to get a little bit more information about the stone, and then we'll join you guys. But <laughs> then just you'll make relay sure it he to doesn't. us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just just make sure Fergus doesn't die. <laughs> Bear, what do you think? Should we go with Fergus? Bear's gonna follow because Fergus. Like just gave her food like five yeah, seconds that's, ago. That's fair. Oh, okay. All right. We'll we'll tag along with Fergus and okay. We'll see you guys soon. Yeah, we'll we'll meet right up. All right. Break. Break. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Hands All up. Right. So so Morthus or no, don't know your name. Hooded <laughs> hooded figure. Right? Hooded hooded dude. man. Hooded hooded dude. Cloaked dude. No, it was cloaked one. That's what you like. You're, you're just you talking. Shall not be named. You're talking to me, and I'm the only one there besides the guy you know. So yeah, yeah. I'm turning around. And I'm being like, okay, cloaked one. Is there more? Is there anything else you want to know? Uh, I mean, I want to know what the ceremony entails. Like what okay. this? What happens when we give him the stone? And okay, you know, are our only options basically. We don't know world might end tomorrow if we don't do this for him or we get paid. Like those are our two options. Okay. Uh all right. So turn around to Vilness. I'm like, all right. Um so we He's like know. on the ground, put, like picking back up picking the piece of paper up. and trying to like figure out where his notes <laughs> went, looking just like dejected. Uh okay, so Vilness. Nerd. 
<laughs> it has become abundantly clear that he is definitely some type of scholar. Some type of nerd. <laughs> I'm a nerd. Yeah. Nerd. Bears just bully nerds. <laughs> it's bully a good thing bear. bear can't talk. Bear would just be a bully. Yeah, very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Cookie right. ca- cast uh, speak with animals, and it's like co- uh, bear calls you a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um, all right, so so Vilnius, um, what? I have one more question. I think this is pretty much it. What does if we bring you back the stone? What does this ceremony involve to stop the portal? As he's on the ground, he kind of is like. Well, I had a list of ingredients. Somewhere. <laughs> uh, uh, it's. Uh, I know I needed chalk, and I needed ruby dust, and marble, I think. I have it all. It's, uh, I have little components for different things, but uh, the stone is like a focus, like uh, uh, people who cast magic can use a focus instead of having to take a piece of marble and draw things with chalk. And it's supposed to do that, but because it originated from something like this, the thought is that it's tied to it in some way, and so it's attuned to it, and you can focus through it, if I remember correctly. Okay. So, we basically are not... mm. So our only options are to bring you this stone because something might come through this portal that that could destroy everything, but we don't know that. Yeah, we don't really know what's going to come through it, but they seemed to think it was really bad. Okay. But if we bring it to you, we still get paid. Well, that's what I'm paying you for. Okay. So bring it to me. So, Morthus, what what more do we need? You know? I guess just the map. My name's Vilnius. All right. All right, let's... I also he turns still to don't know Morthus's name. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So can we can we have this map? We're of gonna course, go. Take it. Yeah. All I'm right. not going with you. If I could fight things, I'd just go myself. All That's right. why I'm paying you to do it. Thank you for the map. We will be back, and we need this done before when tomorrow. There's there's like a window of several hours, so it shouldn't take too long to get there. Okay. All right. Let's do this thing. Thank you. We will be back. All right. So I grab the map, and then we're, we we jog off towards Fergus. In do you hopes jog with us, or do you like? It's up uh, to you. I just he take skips. long strides, <laughs> but I do not Skip. run. <laughs> what is that? What is that? <laughs> Uh, like, I won't strike. run, but a bitch might just power walk. Like, <laughs> yeah, I always have one, at least one toe on the ground at a time. Yeah. Just... That's that's legal power walking. Your, yeah. Both of your feet can't leave the ground at the same time. Um. So how far for, how far ahead of them am I? How quickly of a pace? Like, how quick of a pace did you take? Uh, pretty pretty decent. Like, Fergus did not want to be near that man, and and the sooner that he can find an excuse to beat him up, the better. Damn. The duration of that conversation, um, you're already kind of like towards the back part of the town anyway. So if you're just making like a beeline for the forest, like you can see the tree line. It's it's far away, but um, you could pretty much like cover the distance, you know, just like a, it's like several hundred feet. So in the course of that conversation, you could easily have covered that distance and be kind of like vaguely uh, like approaching the sort of like tree line. Okay. But I, I continue towards the circle place i'm not okay. I, I don't think fergus is waiting for the group he's just he's just going to the goal of well, beating cookie this man is up. there with yeah you, i guess so. Co- yeah, they're like we're, chasing we're behind following. right yeah yeah, yeah. I, I would assume that fergus is kind of ahead of them but they're you know coming up and then and then the rest of the uh yeah Morthos maybe and cookie people. is riding on bear at this time and bear is just going at its bear pace what do you think bear at it's bear pace. i'm ambling what, yeah. what's, what's your uh, speed, uh, Bear? Thirty. Okay, so yeah, we can we can both go at the same speed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can you can follow it whatever we whatever keep distance up. you prefer. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 
Um, so you would you were barely behind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get an inspiration point. For every bear pun you can make, you inspired. So the way DM inspiration works, uh, there's a couple different ways that people do it. So I like to give you a choice. You can either re-roll with it. So if you roll terribly and you want to try to roll not terribly, meh. Um, you can just re-roll. We'll, we'll forget the first one. Or you can, you know, if that's worse, then you can stick with the other one. Or uh, you can add 1d6 to a roll. So if it's like okay-ish, but you don't want to re-roll it and lose like a mid number, but you still want a higher number, then you can just take the d6 and roll that instead. So um, Fergus is approaching the tree line. Bear is essentially like right behind off to the side-ish. And the two of you are, um, and Cookie, of course, is on Bear. And the two of you are definitely going to have to like catch up yeah 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 Yeah. like you could probably make it there with power walking but he's going to have injured the tree line if you don't try to like stop him or like run to catch up not that you have to you can still just try to follow him it's not like he's moving quietly so he might make enough noise you can follow him it's really up to you so what do you want to do uh just keep an eye on bear (laughs) yeah yeah too bad too bad you don't have a bear to help help uh smell for him (laughs) (laughs) I think follow at a distance where, like, I'm trying to catch up, but I don't, I'm not actually that fast or willing to run. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's fair. So I'm, like, keeping in line of sight of probably Bear at that I, point. I, well, I, mm-hmm. I assume, Ra- what what's uh, Rakuzin doing? It sounded like he was running ahead. No, I was just, I was sticking with you. I was uh, just, okay, so, yeah, so was you're, you're matching pace. his pace? Yeah. Okay. Are you, like... <laughs> Can you go any faster? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you doing? Can we you need me to catch up? <laughs> we have to. We have to catch up with them. I'm. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Fergus. Fergus right, proceeds right. into the forest, uh, okay. looking to reach where the circle on the map was. Okay. Um, are you going to continue, um, are you basically like cutting a straight line in the direction you think that it would be and, um, just kind of like making your way like quickly? Are you wanting to stop and move more quietly? Like what's your plan? I, I don't think he's, he's, uh, going for stealth. He's, he's just okay. trying to get through the forest. He, I mean, to a certain extent, I guess as a ranger, I guess this is in a, a space that he's adapted moving, but maybe he'd be a little bit. You know, a you still have I, a plus four to survival. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I, I, I would know. A don't step anywhere weird, and maybe he's looking for like the quickest route there. Uh, you know, the easy, quickest, easiest route. So if there's like, yeah, hey, there's a path that would get me there quicker, he would take that. Yeah, yeah, whatever the easiest. Um, yeah. like whether the path is man-made or a game yeah. trail or just like a clear swash of forest, like whatever the the path of least resistance yeah he's not knocking sure. down trees to get to this place yeah yeah absolutely uh i that was more a question about like are they still going to be able to hear you when you enter the tree line and the yeah. answer is definitely yes so between between fergus walking with purpose and not taking like care to be quiet and bear um you two it takes like several minutes and it's almost like uncomfortable or if you so feel so inclined to be discomforted by the fact that they enter the tree line without you and if they get there first and finish it then you might not get paid because you didn't really like help or whatever then you might feel inclined to be discomforted by like losing line of sight at first but as you as you the two of you approach the tree line it is absolutely easy to follow the trail that they have made since you know that it's like a bear and a like a humanoid figure and there's just like the broken branch branches and the like big footprints in the soft earth and the like twigs that are like obliterated on the ground from where they were like stomping through so after after, yeah a few minutes it's easy enough for you to like close the gap walking similarly with purpose it's it's, like dark in the forest right yeah it's not um this isn't one of those like ancient forest that has a dense canopy that blocks out light but it's nighttime and you moved away from the torches so uh, in a world without electricity, 
moonlight is actually pretty bright mm. and you're in dim conditions, which means if I ask you to make a perception check and you don't have dark vision, you're going to have to do it at disadvantage because it's really difficult for you to see. But it's not like pitch black. No. Like, uh, I, I grew up in the country and you can go out into the middle of a field and just by the light of the moon and the stars, you can walk through the field. You might miss the hole in the ground and trip over it, but it's not like you can't tell up from down if you've ever been in a cave uh, like gone down into a cave under the ground when you're in pitch blackness, you actually begin to like lose your sense of gravity after a while. But it's, it's, so it's, it's like totally the sort of like moonlit night sort of thing where you can still walk through whether you have dark vision or not. You might just have like a hard time, but you're also following a ranger. And so you can just like follow the path that they make. Who's going to step over the stuff. So, um, yeah. So you are traversing through the woods. Um, the map didn't have a lot of the the um, like geographical features in the area, um, but being that one of you is familiar from uh, familiar with the region between um, between Fergus's general like understanding of direction, having like an internal compass, and being able to navigate the natural world, and um, Rakuzin's familiarity with the region, you're able to pick uh, a way vaguely like. Uh, northwest, which is like the direction that you know you need to head. And as you're as you're traversing through, um, probably like forty or so minutes passes, and you're all just kind of like trudging through the forest. Um, I don't know if you like stop to make decisions or something like that along the way, or if Fergus is just going, uh, and then like maybe recusing periodically is like but maybe if we turn around this way, it'll be a little faster, kind of thing. Like working together. You um, actually, I want everyone to make a perception check. It is not based on smell. It is based on sight. <sighs> okay. <laughs> 13. Do we have an advantage with dark vision? Yeah, just normal, right? If you if you have dark vision, you don't make it at disadvantage. If you do not have dark vision, you make it at disadvantage, which means um, you click the disadvantage thing on your sheet. I'm I'm guessing I'm a disadvantage. Oh, wait. It, it, what are you? Six. Do I see in the dark? I'm a wood Oof. elf. On the right side, you should it should say... No, elves definitely have dark vision. Um, oh, they, we do? Yeah, elves oh, have dark so vision. Oh, so it's normal? Yeah, yeah. Just roll normal. Okay. And what are we doing? Perception? Okay. I'm yeah. a half elf. Do I have any? Yeah, half elves have dark vision. Do we all have dark vision? <laughs> Tiefling. <laughs> 11. Except the bear. Yeah, I don't think the bear has dark vision. So I hit advantage and then click. And I rolled perception. with like. No, no, no. You just roll one. normal. Normal. Okay, so I'm not 15. <laughs> okay. You have the best of Damn. us. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, so, so you, you bear actually. Interestingly, as you're as you're like looking around, um, maybe like something smelled good and it piqued your interest because you're getting a little hungry, uh, and you like raise your nose to like sniff around to start to look for something. And um, through the like break in the canopy of the trees, the moon and starlight that's kind of like streaming in just catches your eye on something illuminated in one of the trees and you know trees you know they're really good at back scratchers sometimes ants that you can eat live on them uh but you know how like the branches look and there's something that doesn't look like a branch and it's weird it's a pseudo catch it <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bear over to point. <laughs> Paw up in the air, I love it. Oh um, my god, bear found something. Look, guys. Yeah, whoa, bear, what's going on? Oh yeah, you're, you're stuck in a well. Right? Yeah, it's like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, so bear's able to draw your attention to. Mm -hmm. There is like, um, it's. It's, it's almost like hard to notice at first because it's made from natural materials. And so mm -hmm. being that it's made from like twigs and leaves and things like that, it, uh, it was something that didn't really like catch your eye at first, even though the rest of you can see the world around you perfectly fine. Um, but now that Bear is pointing it out, there's like something like almost like hanging off one of the branches, but also kind of looks like it's attached to the tree a little bit that just has a couple of like dangling sticks and almost like like a hoop made out of uh, like leaves, like like they've been woven together and there's still some that are sticking out of it. Like a trap? No. Like it's like a, like it's like, <laughs> like a decoration. Oh. I'm going to climb up the tree and grab Ooh. it. 
Is okay. are, is Cookie still oh God, on your back? Go. No, I'm probably not on her back at this point. <laughs> just fucking the bear like no, stands and I don't care. Just slide off the back. You never know. <laughs> I just yell, uh, Fergus, bear found something. Uh, you should come look. I guess. I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. Fergus uh, stops and 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 looks back. Uh, at at that point, maybe not walking that way, just kind of trying to see what what the bear's doing. From you see a bear how- climbing a tree. Yeah, <laughs> I guess he's not he's not walking over. He's like he's just thinking like the bear is doing bear stuff. I don't actually have hands, so I'm gonna climb the tree and I'm gonna slap it off the tree. Okay. Well, I have hands. I don't have thumbs. Are you gonna try to hit it like really hard? Or are you gonna try to like? Like if you were trying to like grab some like fruit out of a tree, kind of like claw at it and like loosen it so, so that you don't like ruin it or like. Yeah, I'm just going to like knock it down so that it falls okay. and I can <clears throat> grab it when I climb back down. Okay. So you, you like climb up the tree. I think bears even have a climb speed. You climb up the tree and um, you kind of like reach over and you're able to, because there's like that round shape to it, you're able to kind of like put your your claws up over the top and just kind of like pull down until whatever it is that's causing it to like a- adhere to the tree or attach whatever it was like a rope or something um like seems to snap because you feel like the tension give way and it just falls to the ground can cookie roll something to see if she might recognize the thing or know what it is go ahead actually yeah roll an insight for me 24 oh Hey, so yeah, it's green. I know it real good. Whoa. Yeah. That is that the first natural 20? I think that's the first I natural. I think it is. Oh my god, hey. congrats. Hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Cookie and Bear, the dream team, you're finding all the stuff. So, you're looking at it and you're like, "Okay, this isn't belong here. Obviously, this wasn't part of the tree. Like, what does this come from? What can I like what what information can I glean from this? Do I recognize it?" And you're thinking back to the conversation that occurred with, or the part that you were present for, with Villainous. And when he showed you all the symbol of this organization, it had those, like, swipe marks and the, like, curves on the outside. Like, um, like it was, like, a ring or maybe, like, just, like, round, like, half circles on the outside. And when you look at this, like, if you were to make a rough, natural-looking version of that icon, it's basically the same. Hmm. It, this was that thing that was on the guy's map. <laughs> so maybe that shows that we're on the right track. Cool. And then he goes have we, back have to we caught up to them? We, I think we thought. probably are. Gonna, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You had all already kind of like grouped together. You've yeah, been walking yeah, yeah. for we several were... minutes at this yeah, point. Okay. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, guys, look. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Okay, and then I guess Fergus is like cool and keeps keeps walking to where he thought thinks that we're going. Yeah. So she explains to all of you that it looks like the similar, like a similar symbol. Okay, okay, yeah, we should definitely we should definitely keep this. Maybe he wasn't completely full of it. Maybe he's onto something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mm, I, I I trust him a little bit more now, for sure. What about you, big green guy? <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm walking away. I'm already headed, still headed towards, I guess, where the cave. He doesn't want to accept that the guy could be right. The, I mean, I don't think the guy uh, this this really. means uh, it's a thing on a map. It's it doesn't mean anything he said is a is anything. Maps are lies. Yeah, I got a map. It, it could have lots of things on it. <laughs> And as you're walking away, you you know, like, based on the the distance, like, if that map was in any way true to scale, um, like, comparing with the maps that you're familiar with and your uh, ability to, like, gauge time, like, the travel over time, you know that within the next, like, 15 to 20 minutes, as long as you, like, choose the right paths, you should be, like, roughly in the region that he indicated some sort of entrance or structure or cave or something was going to be so you know it's not far away that okay. doesn't mean anything other than you're pretty close for i guess okay let's keep heading, heading that, that way. way yep let's keep going okay i, w- I want to ask real quick to rakuzin uh he at the end there he was pointing at the map or at the the star chart at the uh the warrior woman 
and saying she's gone and then pointing at the sky. Uh, what do you think that means? I think he was saying that she was a like she was heralding this 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 time. She was the like messenger in a way, and she came up and said her piece and then disappeared in the sky. If I so that correct, now that I those stars did. are gone from the sky, what what are we dealing with? It's one, one star. star? That was gone. One star. Oh, I thought it was like star a at the constellation. Tip. Okay. The star at the tip of the point of the sword was the one that, uh, like, the region where the this like light occurred, this like explosion or whatever it was, um, it centered over that space. And when the light faded, the star that had been there was gone. I think it means we probably don't have a lot of time left, and we should probably hurry. All right. All right, let's keep heading that way into the cave. All right. So you're easily able to, um, like, Fergus, you're kind of, like, making this beeline, and you're, you're confident that you know the region that you're getting to. Anyone else, are you, as you're following, are you doing anything in particular? Are you moving quietly? Are you, um, like, watching for symbols? Are you, like... Um, You don't have to be doing anything. You can literally just be following Fergus, trusting that, like, somebody who's familiar with tracking can follow a map. But if if you want to be doing something in specific, if you want to eat some of your rations, just let me know. I'm I'm winded and trying to keep up. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What'd you say, Bear? I'm going to be smelling the air. Okay. You know, in general, looking for food, always. Of course. Okay. As Bear does. Um, I'm, I think as I, as we start to get closer to the cave, I start to move a little more quietly, start to be a little more careful, I start to keep my eyes out a little bit more, because I feel like there's going to be some people in here. Okay. Just a feeling. Just a feeling. Is the, is the singing I'm hearing in my headphones what Fergus would be hearing? What singing? There's no singing. You're no, I'm hearing... Yeah. No, I'm hearing the lady singing in the music too. Yeah. There's some All I hear is like rain noises and yeah, like that's what I very heard. ambient. Mm-hmm. Music. I heard like a yeah. a woman singing. Maybe did or something. Oh shit. Hard to maybe. say, it's like quiet in the forest. Okay. Then <laughs> I know me. Now <laughs> I'm like <laughs> it's a 4D experience. She's like playing certain things to certain people to fuck with us. <laughs> Oh my god. Could you imagine? That'd be dope. Um, if you're moving carefully, go ahead and make a stealth check just to see generally how or do you or is your intent to be quiet at all or is I'm, not, I'm trying to be cautious? just a little just cautious. I'm not like sneaking, you know? I'm just yeah, like and you being like careful. you when I say make a stealth check, if your intent isn't to sneak and be hidden, it's just to make sure that you don't like make a bunch of clattery noise, then yeah. you can make that. But if you don't want to make one at all, and I'm, your intent I'm curious, is really, I'm going for it. Four. Oh God! Oh. <laughs> That's kind of why I wanted to do it. <laughs> I'm not the sneakiest of paladins in giant, heavy gold armor clanking. Yeah, I was gonna say if you're, you know, you've you've got metal on, and so that you're tend to try to be like quiet. It's just really hard to do it with the type of armor that you're wearing. You haven't like tripped and stumbled and turned into like a cacophonous like pots and pans rolling down a like a staircase or anything, but like. There's you can hear the creak of your armor. You can hear the clinking of metal bits touching together. So it's like you're trying. You could be louder, um, but you could be more quiet. It's whatever. But if I was going to say, if you didn't want to make a stealth check and really your intent is to kind of be like cautious and observant, then you could also just be making like a perception check if you're trying to like keep mm. an eye out, mm. like heightened sense of awareness sort of thing. Okay. But um, so you all continue walking for several minutes. You kind of start to um, like. You're not, like, falling behind or anything, but you're being really, like, cautious and aware, Cusin. And um, you get to the point, Fergus, where you you know that, you know, based on this very general map, you're in the region. It's something is somewhere here. Some, some sort of structure, opening cave, whatever. Okay, I guess I'm looking for... I, I think it was a cave or something he had said. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking for what what he could have indicated. Uh, mm-hmm. Should I investigate? Or is there something, or is this just perception to where I would see it? Um, 
I think investigation could work too. Investigation or perception. Like if you're taking a cursory look of the area, then it's perception. But if you're investigating, um, tell me what like you're like you investigating the ground. Are you looking for? Um, I guess like, what are you I, I guess I'll just do a perception to see if something looks clear. Uh, okay. If, if there's if I don't see it from then, then I might have to investigate closer. Seventeen. This part of the world, this region, is like hellacious. They don't have like there are mountain ranges nearby, but there's not one here. This isn't like a forest at the base of a mountain or anything like that. But there, it's not like completely flat land. You've been going up and down like curves, and you've had to move around a couple of like blunt cliff, like not even like a cliff, but like it's a blunt side of like uh, dirt and rock where it would be like a 20 foot fall if you fell off the top of it, but you're at the ground. So you're having to kind of move around it. Um, so you see like basically this like expansive forest that is really like hellacious and uneven. So you can take a look around and, you know, if you're looking for a cave, then there are a couple of like curves in these sort of like, um, like round, round parts of earth where, you know, maybe on the other side of it, you don't see anything on this side. There could be something, uh, but are you like are you continuing to trudge as you're like taking a look around, or are you are you like stopping at this point to like survey the area? I guess if it looks like I've reached the point on the map where this should be, then I'm just kind of like looking around, going like, "Is this it? Where where am I supposed to go from here?" Okay, yeah. So you like you pinpoint like okay, if it's a cave entrance, it's probably one of these two places. If there's going to be something in the ground, and you kind of like look around and you're like, mm, that's going to be kind of hidden. But if that's the thing, then it's not going to be this open dirt. Then there's going to be some sort of like trap door in that probably that patch of grass over there because it's kind of high. And you're surveying the situation and kind of like pinpointing like places where you think that like you need to go check out. Um, I want everyone else to make a perception check because you see Fergus ahead of you stop and start taking like a look around. Ten. Six. Three. So if I do have an Yikes. advantage in this, do I <laughs> do I roll advantage? What do what gives you advantage? I'm not <clears throat> sure. That's just a check. <laughs> okay. No one has advantage currently. Okay. Um, I think no one has disadvantage though because you all have dark vision except for Bear. Oh, should I have rolled disadvantage? You already rolled a three. I mean, I rolled a three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 14. <laughs> I mean, you could roll a roll a zero or one. No, it'd be a one. No, it'd be a zero. You could, because with a minus one, it would be a zero. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Fergus stops, starts taking a look around. Um, what do we get over here? Uh, 10, 6, 3, and 14. Um, and like, he's obviously kind of like taking a look around and surveying the situation. And the rest of you kind of like take a glance around, like naturally as anyone would, just to, like you see, you're not like, I'm not making you look for something, but you have eyes and you exist. Uh, and so it's Recusin, who you're kind of like just surveying, you know, like taking in the situation. And in the side of one of these sort of like rises in the earth, you know, it's not like a large hill or anything, but it's uneven. There's there's almost like this wall of like moss and ivy and being that you have dark vision, everything's kind of black and whitish right now because you're in low light, but you're still able to recognize like plants and, and you can't tell what kind of moss or, you know, like growth like that it is. But you know that that's that and ivy are kind of like growing down the side of this um, this like hill or whatever. And the way that it's like it's almost like it's organized like it, it catches your eye because it's almost like cultivated it's almost intentional as opposed to just like there being rocks here that have gathered moisture and so moss has grown and ivy is a hardy plant and it tends to like hang um as opposed to it looking like it naturally occurred it almost looks like the moss was like planted or arranged in like uh, a round a roundish shape and this ivy is kind of like down the middle and then it like realize that it's almost like uh, like almost like there's groupings of it it's not like there's literally like patches of ivy hanging in streaks but but you can almost see where there's like mild separation there and the shape brings to mind this like the like symbol thing that you were shown and the thing that that bear and cookie found earlier and it okay. just like vaguely takes on that shape. Okay. And I'll I'll just be like, guys, look at look at this 
look at this, like right here, and kind of point to the plants and all that, and be like, doesn't that look like what we saw earlier? And maybe, I, I would hope they at least kind of recognize. I don't know if they do with the perception yeah, it does. checks. Or, okay, all right. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's let's take a, a closer look around here, see if we can find the entrance to the cave around here. And Fergus, for record, this is just like the side of a hill, right? Like there's right. some plant growth there or whatever. Like if you were, if you uh, if you have kind of like a change of heart and this symbol starts to mean something to you, then you can choose to like uh, believe him and go on with it. But to you, it's like it's plants, whatever, you know, maybe. Um, and you have pinpointed other areas that seem like possible entrances based on like your knowledge of the wilderness. So you can choose to believe him absolutely, but you weren't looking for that initially so that you didn't spot that until he pointed it out. Uh, I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I believe that the symbol could be right. Like I, I think that, oh, okay. I think, th I think that the guy, like there are people in the woods or whatever. And <laughs> like the guy, the guy's, or you know, a crazy person can know things that are true without being right about things in the sky being portals and blah 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 okay. so you believe him about the people in the woods yeah, just not they, about the portal yeah the... He, he saw some stuff in the woods coming in town and he's like it means things i see okay so i misread <laughs> when they pointed it out earlier and you just turned and walked away i thought that this was your like uh like not acknowledging that as valid and like assuming that the icon doesn't mean anything so uh, you would with that perception role you could have noticed that too but I thought that you weren't thinking oh, it, that that symbol actually yeah, meant anything. Yeah, I see the way Fergus Fergus uh, thinks that like maybe that this is, this guy is like some some crazy person who has been pestering this group in the woods uh, and and thinks that they're bad. And Fergus is gonna go be like, "Hey, this guy in the wood, the guy in town pisses me off. I'll beat him up for you." <sighs> okay, so. So basically, the same time then, about the same time as you're like, okay, this is the area, and you start to survey things, and like this catches your eye, and it also catches Rikusen's eye. So if you were going to call out to the group, then basically the two of you would have been like, eh, at the same time. But if you weren't going to call out, then Rikusen would have, but I think I think we we have different goals here. So I think Fergus kind of wants to get there first because they want okay. to have they want to help Crazy Man. Fergus wants to beat up Crazy Man. If Fergus gets to these people first, he can go. He can he can negotiate into beating up Crazy Man before he before they try and. Why do, do you need these people to the why like why do you need their their permission? He wants to get paid. Yeah, he wants them to uh, be like, "Hey, yeah, we hate Crazy Man too." He we want he wants a their permission to realize that. Why do you need this validation? You can just beat him up if you want. You but know? he wants the reward for it. Yeah, he wants the reward, and he wants to know that he's doing a good thing. Like he he does he does want to honor, and so if someone says this is the right action, then it's an mm. honorable thing he's to a, beat up. This so man. you are genuinely convinced that these people are going to be like, "Hey, this guy sucks. Beat him up for me." Yeah. Yeah, that like I don't the, know like where you would get that, but uh, sure. I mean, he he believes that this guy <laughs> is a crazy person, and, and if if anybody who would a crazy person would be like these guys shouldn't be trusted is the people you should be trusting. Okay, sure. Okay, I got you. I got you. So yeah, he's trying to get there and 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 go join their team and be like, yeah, let's get <laughs> let's get let's get villainous and and wedgie him real good. <laughs> Sure. Okay. That's, if okay. you're trying to beat them there, then um, since you would notice it around the same time, you could be like, like you could take the initiative to kind of like start walking with your like purpose to try to beat them. Now, if that causes somebody else to like react or break into a run, then we can like roll initiative and see who like runs and gets there first. Right. But like that's totally up to you all. Yeah. So I'm I'm okay. trying to outpace them. It, okay. It's been my my goal. I say, uh, he's gonna get us killed. Hey, he big is. guy, slow down. Uh, Fergus for, uh, ignores the person he doesn't like or trust and keeps moving. Okay. Well, okay. Rakuzin, you gotta say something. No, dude. we're we're catching up to him. It'll be fine. We're going to like, check. We're over all the going thing. to the same place, so I'm just kind of like, okay. So you're walking at what looks like the side of a hill. It it looks just like dirt with plants growing on it what's your plan fergus you're gonna just like walk through you're gonna like try to like move stuff um like yeah like what's your what's your 
you're like, I got to get there first because I want to get this, like, like I want to get the word in first. So what you, what are you going to do? I guess, I guess he'd, can he look for like how it would open? Like how, yeah. how to, pro- like how, how they would get through. Okay. As you're, um, as you're approaching, go ahead. As you're like taking a look around, trying to figure out like what this means or what you could do with it. Make an investigation check for me. Eight. That's not great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not great. So you're looking at it and you're like, everything else has been small. This is pretty big. You know, it is kind of like roughly humanoid size. Like maybe it's like a false entrance or like when I get there, there's going to be like something that indicates like which way to go. Like Maybe it's like a hidden message or something like that. Um, but nothing like just jumps out at you. It's not like you look at it and you're like, oh, th- look at that branch. It looks like a lever. It's just like. Can how. So it look it looks. I guess. Door ish, like how how thick does it look? Yeah, it's like. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it was right there. That was it perfect. had to be done. <laughs> understand so (laughs) um so you know it almost looks like a curtain of like this ivy stuff so like does it look like a door does it look like a structure no but like it kind of kind of looks like maybe a curtain or something so it looks like something he could just like push his way through maybe yeah okay then yeah he he just tries to push into it like like force his way through like he doesn't need to know how to turn the door if he can make it make his own door yeah, oh right? Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, and, and you know what? As you're thinking about this, you think back to the experience that you had at this well where, like, you you just, like, felt, like, like agile for no reason. You just felt like your muscles, you got a good stretch in that morning. And you just knew that, um, I don't know, like, you just felt more at ease in your body even more than you ever have before. And so you're kind of, like, you're approaching this and you're you're definitely wanting to make sure to get in ahead of them and so with the with the intent of forcing your way through something you like ready your muscles and you kind of tense up and reach for as you're approaching the side of this like hill and where you're expecting the resistance of like a door or dirt or a wall or who knows what your hands just kind of go through mm. and you are prepped for having weight there so with that little bit of lean I want you to go ahead and make a deck save for me 22. Nice. I will mm. take that. Oh my god. That is a natural 20. It is. So what the rest of you see is his like he's picked up the pace. He's a few feet ahead of you and it almost looks like he's just going to like run into the side of this hill and push on it like inexplicably. And as his hands go to touch it, they just disappear. And it the rest of him goes like moving forward. Oh god. And as you, uh, like, you see your hands kind of, like, disappear into the side of this, you recognize it to be an illusion. And Frigga shouts, no, I'm dying, don't follow me! (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) Just stand there with mouths open, like, oh my god. Where you do stumble inside, and there's a bit of, like, a drop-off there. There's essentially like a rope ladder, like a really crudely made uh, rope ladder that as you start to fall, you kind of like, um, you like start to fall forward and you almost like stumble backwards to to catch your footing. And although you do fall, this like, these like, like rope rungs essentially are there and you're easily able to kind of like grab onto them. It wouldn't have been a terrible fall, but you know, it looks like it's about 20 feet down and it would have hurt a lot if you hadn't caught yourself. So bear... See them disappear and yell, and just runs after him and starts and goes in there to dig in the ground because she thinks that he's like sunk into the ground or whatever or into the earth. Mm-hmm. So just runs full speed at it and then starts diving at it. So she's yeah. gonna go through it. Cookie, are you still on bear right now? Um, probably. I probably got back on bear. Yeah. Okay. okay. Nice. He's excited about this. He's like, yes. That's yeah, what I I'm taking her down with me. You are you are not in riding gear. Bear doesn't have a saddle. No. Nope. So it would be quite easy for you to throw yourself nope. off. 
should you want to, but if you would bear no, our hold on tight. Ice, okay. <laughs> you trust me. Right, ride or die. <laughs> yeah, literally. Ride oh and die. Gosh. No, it's ride and die. <laughs> so you you are charging through. So the two of you watch as Bear takes off into this like ambling big bear sprint. Um, cookie <laughs> Cookie like, uh, grabs on onto on. the fur. Yeah. Uh, and they go whoosh, running through the side of this wall. And now that you've seen it twice, at first, with the sort of like reaction from Fergus and everything, it was a little unclear what it was that you had just witnessed. But now that you have seen something else pass through it, you all see through the illusion. And I would like Bear and Cookie to make a deck save. <laughs> uh, Dexterity. Six. Oh, oh no. God. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Twelve. So you both start to tumble forward. And as you start to tumble, you look down and you see a 20 foot drop, which is a long way and usually is a sort of thing that would result in broken bones. And Fergus, you see bear charging out over this opening. And it's like, it's interesting, like as you pass through the barrier, what you see and what you two can kind of like vaguely see off in the distance is almost like uh, expertly hollowed out earth that's almost like, pretty square in shape to a point. Um, and then like almost like a flat wall, like seven-ish or so feet away from you, like just far enough that most people falling wouldn't be able to catch themselves on it. Um, and then for those of you that are actually inside, as you're looking down and you see this sort of drop off, Fergus, you see Bear and Cookie start to tumble out over you and start to fall to the ground. And in, you know, the split sort of seconds it takes for someone to fall, they hit the ground maybe like five feet away from where you expected, like w- the five feet away from where you are, basically like almost at your feet, like a couple of feet below where you are like hanging onto this ladder. They make contact with something and then. So wait, they, they fell next to me. Like I'm on the ladder and they fell down this hole. Yeah. Like you watch them like <laughs> topple over and you're kind of like holding on. And you see them go down and then they just kind of like connect a few feet can Hello. I re- can I reach out to try and grab them before they like fall? You gonna catch a bear? You wanna catch yeah, a cookie? Gonna, yeah, <laughs> like lose an arm. I yeah. can try and grab Cookie off. off. Okay, I would yeah. assume she's hand- yeah, she's maybe handling it worse. I'm s- a little. <laughs> Uh, yeah. What Just what would I roll for out. that? Would that go ahead and make another? Since you rolled so well, especially you got a really good handle on that rope. Go ahead and just make another deck save to see if you react quickly enough okay. to try to like reach out and grab like a belt or something Seven. that's not just like that's... a collar that gonna nope yeah, that's <laughs> slips not... right through your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> he tried, <laughs> but as as she slips through your fingers and Bear has like passed by, and you're thinking like this could be the end of Bear and Cookie. Where they land is actually just a few feet below where your feet are dangling. It's like 15 feet above where you would expect them to hit the ground. And as they kind of like tumble and hit the ground and like roll like end over end a little bit, you recognize that that was also an illusion. And that's just dirt. Oof. Okay. And so you can still see like the vague outline of what looks like a long fall in the ground, but you now can like mm. look and see the natural earth that's actually there. And it's really kind of like trippy because you're looking at what looks like two different grounds. It's almost like you're you're seeing like, what are those like 3D cards where you turn it one way and it does one thing and you turn it mm. another way and you kind mm-hmm. of see something else. It's kind of like that. But you know where the real ground is. You can just still see this illusion. Trippy. So, I, I mean, at that, that point, I guess I would, I guess, climb down the ladder to where the real ground would be. Yeah, it's like two or three steps. Yeah. But you two saw them go tumbling in. Uh, I, I kind of like slowly, I'm like, uh, <laughs> so, uh, and I just go up and like check, and, like kind of do the same thing he did, but not as forceful. We just, can tell like, that slowly it's slowly push right. hands. Well, yeah, now that you've seen two individuals, like, or three individuals yeah. go through it. So the way that illusion works in D&D is that you have to either make some sort of check, usually like investigation check, to recognize that illusion is an illusion. Or you have, like, to spell magic or whatever. Um, you try to see through the, the illusion or you try to see something and you recognize something to be an illusion. And if you don't, then once something passes through an illusion, then oh, okay. it becomes clear to pretty much anyone who saw something pass through it that that's not actually... 
So it is it just a hole exist. in the wall then? It's just a cave? It's like it's been, yeah, it's like it's been... It was like covered with leaves kind of covering the entrance before more so like... No, there was you nothing know, there. It was all an illusion. Oh, okay. It's like but like that out. was that Wait, was the illusion saw. was mm-hmm. the... Okay. Was the okay. like symbol But now thing. it's just kind of empty. But now it just looks see. like an entrance, yeah. Okay, okay. It doesn't look naturally made. That's the point is that it looks like it's been carved out of the yeah. dirt. Like somebody has dug here. But there's no like support structures. There's no like wooden beams or anything. There's just dirt that looks like almost like it's been pressed. Um, okay, so I make my way up and like look over to see if <laughs> everyone is okay and not dead. <laughs> you see like Fergus taking the step down onto the ground and like bear and cookie. Like I hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't take any damage, but it didn't feel pleasant for sure. Oh, okay. So you guys are you guys are okay. All right. This is I'm going to grab fine. a rope and make my way down safely with the rope. Yeah, I'm going I'm yeah. going to do the same. Yeah, it's like a rope ladder when it <laughs> okay, like yeah, it's the kind rope, of Yeah. Yeah, it's like unwieldy, but it's it's functional. For for I guess uh reaches reaches down to help uh Cookie up and then and then once she's kind of standing up, he just keeps pressing forward into what he, what he's able to Fergus, see. slow down. Yeah. Why, why are you going so fast? Quit Jeez, running we, ahead, man. They just fell over? Like, God, for, give us a second. Uh, <laughs> he's he's kind of ignoring them, uh, keeping proceeding. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's this fair. guy's the worst. He's running head <laughs> first just, through all these all illusions. He's yeah. going to hit a trap. And, uh, I mean, at this point, uh, this is the second illusion he would have seen. So the entire time, he's kind of like everything he's looking. He's like second guessing, trying to be like, is like okay. magic eye. Like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> gotcha. Yep, I understand. Yep, sure, <laughs> I love it. Yep. Okay. Cookie just looks over to Bear and is like, Bear, we've only been in here for like two seconds, and I'm ready to leave. <laughs> After the sort of like initially like obviously hand carved or something sort of entrance, uh, it does kind of like fade away into something that looks a little bit more naturally occurring. You start to hear like the rush of water off in the distance where there's probably some sort of like underground um, like portion of a lake or water source uh, where there's like water movement and there's that sort of like gurgling sound that accompanies it. And it water like that, like if you've ever been near like uh, moderately quick r- rushing water, it does make like a good bit of noise so while it's like echoey in here uh you don't feel like you're being like obtusely loud because there's this kind of like general din from the sound of this water and as you press forward fergus uh there's there's like this like almost like moderately damp kind of like muddy smelling like petrichor slash mud spell um uh, of the earth and it's just like nothing in here but dirt and you make your way around a couple of like curvy portion would portions you of say wall. it's swampish oh it's not a swamp damn i mean there's, <laughs> so. mud, there's mud there's water like what's a swamp really when you think about that <laughs> a swamp what is a swamp like adding like decaying things on top of that. <laughs> so it's the mud and the water and also the like refuse <laughs> of vegetation. But um, you are, are you literally just like making a beeline forward until you see yeah. something? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you're taking, you're keeping an eye out. Anyone who is keeping an eye out for anything specific, tell me what it is and I will tell you what rolls to make. Like if you're mm. looking for like a door or the symbol or looking something like that. You're looking for people. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking okay. for traps. Okay. I don't have that ability really, but <laughs> <Yeah>, anyone can <laughs> look. Yeah. Um, it's just an investigation check. So investigation okay. for looking for traps. Perception for trying to like discern sounds or sights 21. of people. Oh. Must smell stuff. Twenty. Mm. What are you smelling for? So the air. <laughs> And the okay. Another natural twenty, by the way, Matt. Nice. What are you smelling Thanks. for? Just to see what you can smell in the air. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and make your perception check with advantage. Wow, we're doing okay. <laughs> yeah, we're so killing many, it. So many things could have gone so much more quickly for all of you if you hadn't rolled under 10 on everything. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> the DC's only 10. <laughs> Why is it just a 9? Uh, I forgot to roll with advantage, so I rolled twice. <laughs> yeah, that's but- fine. No, you're totally fine. So Fergus is making kind of like a quick place beeline down the hallway to kind of stay ahead of you. As you are watching him kind of like walk ahead of you and you're following along behind Morthos... You see um, on the ground. Do I ahead. do I need to be rolling to make sure that like I don't get tripped up by an illusion? Like there was a door, but I 
Because I am I'm I'm looking for illusions, so should I be rolling to see if I see uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh investigation was for illusions. Sorry. Okay. I thought I said that, but I probably like started Four. Yeah, sorry. I don't see shit. Yeah. I you don't see I'm any real, illusions. Real That's bad for sure. magic eye trick. There's a magic eye thing there there and I'm like don't see it. Keeps <laughs> <No. on> working. <laughs> crossing his eyes in front of him. I love it. So what you see, you see, as Fergus is kind of like making this beeline ahead, there's like just a faintest shimmer on the ground and it catches your eye. And you see like a very thin, thin line, like maybe a small piece of wire or something like stretched across the ground. And as you notice it, Fergus is probably about, he's like three steps away. It's like you have the opportunity to call out and let him know that there's something weird on the ground or not. It's totally up to you, but you notice in enough time to let him, to let anyone you would want to inform know, if you so choose. Not compulsory. I... Ooh. Can I do my sparkles for him? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, okay. I love it. Yeah, sure, sure. So uh, I cast prestidigitation. Oh, God, I can't say it. Prestidigitation? Yeah, prestidigitation. Oh, my goodness. Prestidigitation. (laughs) Too many eyes. (laughs) It is a lot. Um, And I, I try to shoot them kind of like a loud kind of party popper uh near his the back of his head kind of because I'm a little behind him and I don't think I can reach it in front of him necessarily yeah because it's like 10 foot range or something I think yeah and kind of like a residual kind of shower effect of it like sizzling so like pops and then to try to get his attention (laughs) yeah I guess if I'm seeing sparkles coming from behind me I definitely like stop and look do you think that the sparkles coming from behind you is enough to overcome your desire to get there first so that you can try to... I I guess I don't know. I, I wouldn't know f- that it's coming from Mortho, so I would I would go like, what the heck is that? So Okay. I mean, especially okay. because this is already a tricky situation. I, I would... And you I knew would... there was something up. You were watching out for danger. You didn't yeah. see anything dangerous, but then all of a sudden something crackles yes. behind you. Yeah, yeah that so makes total I... sense. So you kind of like stop short and like look around yeah, to see the last yeah. bit of like, like like shower of sparkles fall. Yeah, shower of I, sparks fall. And I I like see that it's coming from Mortho, so I'm like, and 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 then probably turn around too. Like, There's a trap right in front of you. <laughs> and and then at that point, if I turn and look, I'll I'll see it right. Yeah, he's like gestured at it. He's pointed. It's like uh, he's essentially explained to you where to look. And you uh, look down on the ground and you're able to follow this line. It's almost like fishing line. It's so thin and so easy to notice. But like fishing line, those those types of materials are built to be strong. And if you follow the like glimmer that caught your eye, you look over to see where there's like almost like a joint pin of similar like wire or this like incredibly thin line of something. And you follow that up and you see like a massive log in the roof. And then you see how the tension on the second one is maybe holding that one back. So what it looks like, and both of you, of course, um, Morthos and Fergus, both of you notice that it almost looks like if you were to walk by this one and put pressure against this line, it would kind of like remove this pin from the wall. And in so doing, would remove the tension holding back this like log or whatever it is, and it looks like it would like swing forward and hit you. All right. So, so Frigus just kind of like steps over it and then keeps <laughs> going. Okay. And now you're all aware of it, and everyone, yeah. n- including mm-hmm. Bear, can easily step over it and not be mashed in the face, not trigger it. Yeah. Very good job. I was like, please, somebody check for traps. Yes, yes, yes. nice, <laughs> nice, 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 nice. So, um. As you are uh, making your way, of course, before this all happened, you know, some people were paying attention to other things. Bear, you smell bread in the cave. It smells like good bread. It's not sweet, but it smells like it's good bread. Good bread. Oh, shit. And um, Fusen, you hear people talking, maybe? 
like the faintest bits of conversation just barely echoed over the sound of this water that's kind of like causing just enough of like a mask that you know your footsteps can't be heard. Similarly, anyone else who might be in here, it might be a little difficult to hear, but it's almost like you can pick up on, on some voices. What languages do you speak? Oh man, there were a few. There was it's like Elvish, um, common, and they had me pick another one, uh, celestial. Okay, so you pick up a few words in Elven and a few words in celestial. It sounds like people talking about protecting something, keep it safe, hide it, uh, <laughs> keep it secret, keep it safe. Yes, exactly. <laughs> sorry, keep it safe. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and it's like, and then you see three hobbits, four hobbits. <laughs> you, see, <laughs> get, you see this tall, elderly man with a white beard. <laughs> you all exchange looks and, and seven dwarves. <laughs> 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 they were a company of 13 no, sorry. <laughs> anyways and my yeah. axe <laughs> that's oh my not god. <laughs> oh my god alright okay okay so, so I um, mm -hmm. they sound like they're far enough away that I'm not entirely sure but I'm just gonna be like guys I I think I think I hear some people. I'm not sure about it. They, they're. I think I heard something about like protecting something. I don't know. We'll just keep walking. We'll we'll get closer. I think we're going in that direction. Bear's gonna keep walking. At this point, I want to start moving stealthily. Okay. Ooh, Go ahead and make a stealth check. Fancy phone. boy. Thirteen. Okay. You feel confident in your ability to move quietly. You don't seem to okay. be making a lot of noise. Uh, does does that mean he has slowed down? Um, if you move stealthily, you are technically moving at like half speed. If you're um, like, if you are really like taking time to like peer around corners and stuff like that. Um, there's, there's like two different ways you can approach stealth in like my opinion. You can either be like literally hidden and trying not to be observed, or you can be the person creepy along behind everyone else who's being super loud. And so like, I wouldn't say you have to take half movement to be the person that's trying to be remain, to trying to remain being unseen and is like hanging back from everyone. Now you definitely are going to be slowed. So yeah. you're going to, you're going to start to fall behind, Okay. but it will be like over time. It's not like they're immediately just going to be able to rush away from you because you have to stop and like pink panther creep. About that, I think I think Fergus like had been looking behind every once in a while to like see how far how much lead he has on them, mm -hmm. and seeing Morthos, who he does not like, um, slowing down. He's like, "This is my chance," and he he picks up his pace. He's like, "This <laughs> you can, like this, make a break for it, basically." Yeah, this this is the edge I need. I can finally okay. I can finally ditch these losers. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna get excited. When I see him start to run, like he probably dog. smells the bread too. He smells the bread, you know. He's like, ex she's excited. She's gonna start running. Okay, all right. So Virgus, you break a into run. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, bear run. Yeah. So both me and Bear are running down this hall. Bear, don't you think we should slow down? <laughs> yeah. Is is Cookie is Cookie still on Bear after the fall? Yeah. Okay. She 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 don't want to walk. She hurts. Okay. Or she got back they're, on they're that gaining. horse. They, they just <laughs> yeah. off in a sprint. Do we want to? Do we want to follow? I would rather be careful and be alive. Mm. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. It's a good plan. I'll 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 stay at the. Oh wow! Speed of I didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah. I, can I? <laughs> can I like stealth too? Sure, I would check. fail because I'm <laughs> you know, very you know, heavy you know, and I have a lot of armor. Clink, 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 clink. Yeah, I mean, I can try, though. <laughs> but we've established that there's kind of like a general din in this area from like being next to like fast moving water in an echoey cave. So okay. or like echoey, mm -hmm. a subterranean structure of some kind. All right, I'm going to I'm going to. I'm gonna go for it. Seven. <laughs> you feel like you're moving pretty stealthily. You can't hear yourself. <laughs> your fact, swords the clink. Your armor is like pretty <laughs> hidden by this water. That's good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just keeping up pace with. Yeah, with us. exactly. <laughs> so the other three of you make a break for it. 
Um, there's a sharp turn to the right up ahead. The ground's not like terribly muddy. You don't think you're going to like trip or whatever, but um, Bayer is kind of like following along or like right on uh, Fergus's like heels basically. So you make this sharp turn to the right. There's another like sharp turn to the left. You see the like wall kind of like opens up and you see where the water is now. It was like literally just around the corner and it is pretty fast moving. If you were to go that way, it would be very difficult to like keep your footing. There's another turn to the left that like loops around a little bit it, um, and you can like as you get out to the middle of this sort of like open more open space um, you see like the wall kind of like fall away and what looks almost like cut stone off in the distance to the left which way do you go which way is the water to the right okay can I tell if there's illusions happening <laughs> make an investigation check You'll have to slow down to make your investigation check. Yeah. To like take One. a good look at everything. Holy <laughs> moly. <laughs> or nope. not. All looks real. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be smelling to figure out which way the bread is. Okay. An advantage on your perception check? 17. Bread is definitely to the left. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I take a sharp turn to the left. I guess we're going this way. Fergus, you slow down for just a minute to like stop and look around and make sure that like nothing crazy is happening. And you get almost like almost pulled over, but not really like their intent wasn't to knock you over. But you get like clipped by like bear making like a like turn and to head down the left pathway. There's like the dirt Tokyo drift up meme. a little bit. Yes, exactly. Um, and there's kind of like the slight bump to you and you you uh, as they like kind of like cut behind you and head yeah. that direction. Uh, Fergus not wanting to be left behind because he's trying to get there first chases after them. Fair. Bear, are you just going to follow the scent of bread? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So, Bear, you are running along the soft earth and the smell of bread, warm, freshly baked bread is in your nostrils. The dirt falls away and all of a sudden you're on the sort of stones that humans walk on all the time and it's kind of cold and it's a little wet, but you're not going to slip or anything, so you're not worried. But it's something changed about this, and it's like, that's a little odd. You can smell the bread ahead of you. There's like a big square room here <laughs> to the left. To the left is the bread. <laughs> Follow right, up to I'm, the... Go ahead. I'm going to go to the left. I'm going to slow to like a, a brisk trot because the floor changed, but I'm mm-hmm. still definitely going after the bread. Okay. Perfect. Get that you bread. round the corner. You got to get that, get that bread. Get that bread, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucking meme from a year ago. <laughs> it is. Oh my god, <laughs> unintentional. Um, so you this big kind of like square room that l- is like cold and hard rock. Um, it has like two ways to go, but you know the bread is to the left, and there's something blocking the way to the right. So you get to the end of this room, and you look over to the left, and there's kind of like another room, kind of like this one, but smaller. But some of the rocks are in the way, so you kind of have to move around that. And then there's two more ways to go. <laughs> Bread's definitely this way. Um, there, once you get into this second room that's kind of smaller and everyone else is like coming, bringing up the rear, like um, obviously you're all kind of like, you're all seeing the same things. Go okay, ahead. did when they got to the left or right, were they able to see Bear going or are they were they far enough behind that they have to decide? Um, you guys were like just around a corner. So even if they're moving at half speed, they would get to a point where they could see. Cause so it was like a right turn and then a left turn and then another right turn that's open. So as you're getting ahead of them and they're going to be half speed, you get out like to this open area as they like turn around the corner and can see you like ahead of them for sure. And pretty far ahead of them, like maybe 20 or 30 feet, but in the open area. And then bear does like, you all see Bear drift and head off to the left, like the two okay. of you in behind even too. So you know which general direction they're going. And then once you get past the the dirt and it starts to fall away, the like clacking of the claws on the the like stone are pretty easy to follow. So even though you're like falling behind or if you choose to, to not be stealthy anymore, um, then you you could catch up. But you it's not like you're going to get lost at this point anyway. Um, you're pretty confident. Okay, and keep on stealthing then. Sweet. Yeah. Um, when you get into this kind of like smaller room with the rocks in the way bear, you know that the bread is like in this general direction, but now you're also hearing talking. There are more people in here. Uh, gonna keep trotting towards that bread. Okay, <laughs> keep trotting. <laughs> Don't give a fuck. Can I um 
see if I can uh, like understand what they're saying or I don't know, notice any traps or something that could be helpful in this situation. <laughs> if you want to look I for traps, you can make, uh, yeah, yeah. If you want to look for traps, you can make an investigation check to look for traps. If you want to listen for talking, you can make a perception check to see if you hear people talking. Um, You're riding bareback. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> it never, it never ends. <laughs> how did that not happen sooner? Uh, <laughs> like how, how, how did that just come up? Be- Beckers, you already have one inspiration. You don't need to. <laughs> oh my God, it's true. It's true. I think Cookie will <laughs> look for traps since there might be people around. Okay. So go ahead and make an investigation check. Is as bear is kind of like slow to a trot. You're like Seven. looking around ground walls, anything you can see to try to see if there's anything. Looks clear yeah. though. You look fine. There, there's All nothing right. in the we way. We good. All right, yeah, go bear. Fine. All right, we good, bear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you you enter into another kind of like small room, similar to this one. It's all very plain. It looks very old. There's that like smell of being in an old place, but really there's bread and it's just past this old smell. There's rocks falling out of the ground or out of the, not out of the ground, excuse me, onto the ground, out of the wall. It's it's like, this is definitely old. It's people let their things fall apart. You know, the earth just regrows itself, but this is definitely like old, old people stuff. The smell of bread is becoming really strong. There is one exit out of this room, and it opens up. Um, you can't see the side walls anywhere, so you know the room that you're about to enter is big, and there's, like, a light, like a faintly glowing light, like maybe, like, a campfire or something like that that you've seen people sit around, but you know the bread's in there. Going in? To bread! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you go trotting in, and... Um, you enter into a room. There's the same stuff. The same like cut stone is on the ground on the walls. It looks like it's probably limestone for anyone who is not a bear because it's a very lightly colored stone. It definitely looks old. There's uh, like broken down, crumpled bits. There's moss growing over things. There's like the general like earth reclamation sort of like feel of something that was really, really, really ancient and has just been like left in absolute disrepair. In fact, that river is probably from some like wall collapsing from the pressure of like, or not the pressure of like the water just like wearing away the other side to the point where it got too thin and it washed part of the structure away. Um, In here, there is, uh, like, behind you, the wall has collapsed in and dirt has come down along with the rock. And in front of you, it has as well. There is a passageway straight across from you that doesn't appear to have a door. Uh, it just looks like it has, like, a sharp turn to the right. And there are three people standing around what looks to be, like, a hearth almost that's been, like, crudely built. Not crudely, but, like, fashioned out of broken stones. It looks like it's, like, functional for sure but it's not like they cut stone and made it it looks like they kind of built something up that they could put a fire in to keep it up off the kind of damp earth and they are like standing together and they were talking and look very surprised as a bear comes kind of like trotting in (laughs) to their room and you see like a couple of barrels on the ground behind them and a couple of like sacks and it's like there's like loaves of bread sticking out of the um, a couple of the like cloth sacks and it's going to take probably like a good like six additional seconds for the two in the rear to catch up because you're about like one movement speeds away at this point because you've been moving at half speed so you won't see this for just a little bit of time but you bear cookie and fergus all kind of come like running into the room basically like on each other's heels bear was of course in front at this point she just wants the bread (laughs) (laughs) you see like um go ahead well i guess i don't know what she's smelling but she I'm, I'm guessing that she probably <laughs> wants <laughs> food. I, at this yeah. point, you probably smell it too, right? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, oh, by the okay. time you get to this point, you can smell like, so as you look at this like, uh, like constructed out of uh, like broken materials, sort of like hearth that they've created, it looks like what they've got is some sort of like open fire, like oven almost. Like it's a functional fire. The room is much warmer in here. The air is okay. a little bit drier. It's more comfortable, but they, um, they are able to somehow use this probably because that sort of like scent of like a bakery is like in the air for sure. Oh, okay. okay. And it would be very reasonable for you to yell that out. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah. As a, as a baker, you'd probably be able to yes. know. That's fair. 
Yeah. Oh, hey. yeah. It's kind of ingenious what they've done, really, be able to, like, create a functional oven out of this, like, fallen stone. Like, I don't know, maybe they can, like, maybe, they, maybe they're maybe they stonemasons or something like that. Who mm. knows? Yep. Um, I'm going to walk straight over to the bread and okay. get after it. So, so <laughs> Fergus is in the room Uh-oh. with these people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were you were right behind Bear. Bear didn't get like a lead on you. Okay. Um, Bear just like made the turn more quickly than you did because of that smell of bread and because she rolled way better than you did. Um, so you were like <laughs> you're like in the the like feet behind her. You're like on her heels basically. So you all kind of like come crashing in together. Um, and as you do, actually, like they're they've got these like cloaks on. They look like they're dressed to keep like warm, and it is kind of like damp and cool in here, so that makes sense. Uh, and they look quite surprised as you all kind of crash in. And Cookie yells, she just wants the bread. And one of them like reaches back onto their back for like a staff and like slowly like puts it in their hand and kind of like picks it up off of their back, whatever harness it was in and holds it and just quietly looks at you as Bear is rushing at them. Do, can I identify their race or what they... Or did, was I always to, you with the race? Wow. Jesus, race was I, was I able to, Why does it matter, man? Was I able to <laughs> tell anything about like who they are, or was I able to identify what they were saying? Um, what languages do you speak? I uh speak well. I think I speak the language of my enemies. So, uh, human, <laughs> halfling, orc. <laughs> Oh, because I my favorite enemies are humans and halflings, so I can speak their language, so I can like. That's why you yeah. hated Timora so much. I yeah. love it. Um, and then obviously I speak uh, orc. Uh, and okay. So obviously. Yeah. No. No. Nothing that sounded familiar to you. Okay, and and I don't recognize what they. They've got these like these like big thick cla- like travel cloaks on, and they they're like. They're not wearing their hoods because, but they're inside. But it's they're kind of like heavy, hanging over like their shoulders. They're all humanoids. Um, they don't look like halflings, that's for sure, because they are at least all five to six feet tall. Um, uh, but they don't look human either, because I assume I'd be able to identify that. It's a little difficult to say because there's a light source behind them, which makes them silhouetted. And the way that you can pinpoint an elf from a human is typically either the ears or like fine features that are distinctly elven. And so since they're like, they're almost like silhouetted, like you can still see them. It's not like they're just like dark figures. There's like light playing off the sides of like their faces, but there's not enough really between all the like fabric and the dark, like the silhouette to really tell the difference between like a human or an elf from the like... 30 to 40 feet away that you are in like a dim lit area. Where is, is the sack of bread like next to them or is it? It's like behind them. Okay. Like against the wall. Okay. Um, and they, they've pulled out a weapon would be in the staff. Yeah. It looks like a wooden staff. Cookie would definitely be like, we, we mean you no harm. We just, we're just trying to find this thing. <laughs> Does the staff, look like a weapon or does it look like hey I'm an old man with a staff <laughs> like, you wouldn't pot a wizard from his walking stick would you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a wooden staff it doesn't look incredibly ornate it could just be a simple quarter staff it could be which can be used as a weapon okay it yeah. could be um, it could be just like a walking stick like those are kind of similar and since this one has a very like natural feel to it um, it's difficult to say whether one might use this as a weapon or not but it very easily could be used as a weapon. And as the bear is approaching and Cookie's like, Ramos, we mean you no harm. Go ahead and make a persuasion check for me, Cookie. Okay. As they're kind of like, they're like circling around the hearth, kind of like trying Eight. to keep like distance. Ooh. <laughs> Not good. They don't seem like the tension in their posture reduces in you when you say that. And they're just kind of yeah. like circling around away from you to see what it is that you're all doing to see like if you I'm follow gonna try them mm-hmm. and push past them to get just go straight at the bread okay yeah no they're circling away from you they're not moving to engage you so there's like the hearth behind them they're silhouetted and you're coming towards them and they're kind of like circling around like trying to put that fire between the two of you and just like move away which right. also leads to um as you're doing that and they're kind of like moving away from you sorry go ahead what were you gonna say in that case i'm just gonna start eating it 
Okay, yeah. So um, as they kind of like circle around Fergus, you are able to start make out their features more clearly uh, because the light is now in front of them and they're no longer silhouetted. And you're able to distinguish the sort of like finer features of an of an elf, elven creature. They're probably wood elves, it looks like. Um, like they, they don't look like a half elf or like a high elf. They're probably wood elves, like probably all three of them. Sometimes it can be a little difficult to tell, but... You're pretty confident. And at this point, Bear is definitely like at the satchel and is able to kind of start like tearing it open, start eating bread. Yeah, I guess with with that information, Fergus uh, looks at Cookie and is like, Elvish bakers, are they with you? And that's the point at which the two of you are able to like get up towards the edge of the door and you see like a flickering light and you hear Bear tearing something or you hear cloth sounds ripping and Bear eating and you hear <laughs> baking elves. Are they with you? <laughs> um, Where are we in relation to? We're like at the like, doorway, right? Can, yeah. Can so they just... see us yet? Um, It's. You, it, unless you choose to look around the side of the door, they would not have line of sight on you. Okay. Do we want to try and, Morthos, do we want to try Are and, you waiting at the doorway? I'm waiting at the doorway. I'm thinking like. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, do we want to try and get the jump on them? We should listen and see what's happening. Yeah. Okay. okay. We're whispering to each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll have the element of surprise. It's good. Yeah. They won't know. For I guess uh, he doesn't know. He Co- doesn't know. Co- Cookie, do do you have a response to my question? Cookie does not recognize them. Oh, so are you, are you going to say um, no? I don't. She- know. <laughs> you turn to Fergus and say, "Cookie does not recognize." Them. <laughs> yes. All right, Cookie says, "No, I have no idea who these people are, but I will try and talk to them." Who? So Cookie asks them, "Who are you?" Oh, and you speak Elvish, don't you, Cookie? Yeah, yes. So as you got closer, um, it was a little difficult to hear what exactly might be being said um, because it sounded like they were switching in and out of Elvish and something else. Do you happen to speak Celestial? No, just Elvish in common. Um, But as you got closer, even over the sound of the water and sound of bear kind of like plodding through and and making like breathing sounds as as she was running and stuff, you're able to pick a few words out in Elvish. Okay. They were talking about protecting something. Um, so you asked them this, and one of them kind of like, the one with the the quarterstaff, you see now they have like long, like silvery white hair, and they have really dark, intensely black eyes, which is kind of unusual for an elf um, to have just like almost no iris, like all pupil, mm. or just have such deeply dark eyes that like mm. you can't distinguish the difference. Um, their clothing is like naturally colored, greens and browns and things like that. Um, everything looks like well used but well maintained uh, which obviously as an elf you would know is like common for people to be able mm-hmm. to upkeep their own belongings you can still recognize that it's been it's not like new uh, or like fresh pressed or anything like that but mm-hmm. like clean and well kept um and this one uh, kind of like staff in hand looks at you a little curiously i could ask you the same thing you came here we were already here well I'm Cookie. This is my buddy Fergus. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bear. <laughs> we were sent here to find a stone. Um, to, I, I assume to stop I can't, a thing. I assume I can't understand anything they're saying. Are you speaking in common or in Elvish? You can speak in either language. It's totally up to you. I'm probably speaking in Elvish because yeah. that's okay. what I'm assuming they're speaking. And they're responding since in Elvish. that's what I heard. They're responding in Elvish? When, she's, when she prompts in Elvish, they're responding in Elvish. Okay. Uh, then, then I nudge her and go, do, do they know common? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> do you guys the know the common tongue? <laughs> <laughs> one of them kind of rolls their eyes and is like, yes, it's just... Unfam- yes, we know how to speak it. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, uh, he almost uh, looks like he's a little like disgusted, like it's profane <laughs> almost. Um, hearing hearing that they uh, speak common, Fergus, uh, kind of like these being kind of strangers, uh, he wants to put on a good impression, so he kind of like straightens up a little bit, kind of tries to be less brutish and be like, "I am Prince 
Fergus Bog from the Kingdom of Faraway. I you know and these these God? adventurers come in peace. We we are seeking to stop a crazy man in the village. <laughs> what what? How can we help you? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> cookie face palms. Oh, For anybody listening, God. everyone is just face palmed. Yeah. <laughs> Bear face I, palms. I didn't see anybody else. I just turned away and looked off. So. When you, Cookie, when you mentioned you were looking for a stone, you saw them kind of like collectively like draw back almost like reflexively and defensively. Mm -hmm. And when Fergus starts talking, like they obviously like they haven't adopted like a better pose. They're like listening and they're like, it's almost like they're backing into a corner and they're kind of like looking around them. And when he says they want to help with a crazy man, there's one that's off to the side and she kind of steps forward and you see that it's uh, like more feminine. She's got this long brown hair and these really bright green eyes. She's wearing similar clothing. It doesn't look like they're wearing like the same cultish robes, but it's just like similar style, similar fabrics. She steps forward and she says, you're not here with the wizard? And the one in front says, shh, we can't trust them. I represent honor and, and truth and not crazy people. So anyone, if if the crazy man is a wizard, that is not who I'm with. I actually want to beat the man up. So if you give me an honorable reason, I'm down to clown. <laughs> God. They like stop and kind of like exchange glances for a second. You see one of them mouth down to clown. One of those <laughs> things that these people say. And when they say these people, it's like there's like common speakers. Oh uh, no, that that's 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 a uh, a nomenclature of far away. They don't. That's not a well known phrase. <laughs> Go ahead and make a oh, persuasion check. Oh uh, god! Now, Cookie, you're standing right there, and you're a bard. If you would like to help in some way, you can. If you don't want to, because you face palmed and you're like, this person's crazy. Um, like, I don't know well, why we Yeah, Cookie's the not him. there for the same reasons. So, yeah. probably not. Okay. For this situation, yeah. 17. Cookie, against all odds, Fergus says this, and you see them all kind of relax a little bit. Like, the shoulders kind of like go down. The the grip the one in the front has on this staff kind of like loosens. <laughs> and they're like, why do you see an enemy in the wizard? I can sense the intentions of people and crazy people are quite easy to see their intentions. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is like it's falling apart. I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing like, it's like these people are believing person. him. <laughs> See, I'm, I can't yeah. believe this. <laughs> He's putting on. It's it's like it's like you're meeting your your uh, your significant other's parents. You're just like I'm not normally this put together. I'm just trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope you don't tell them that. That's not no, 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 no. That's OOC. Yeah. Um. Cookie's just shocked and just is kind of letting this happen. <laughs> yeah. I'm done Bear, this eating. bread is so good. It was so <laughs> good. It, it was like clearly baked within the last like hour or so. It's just like when Cookie makes stuff like this sometimes. It was like fresh and the crust was like nice and crispy but not too thick. And it was really fluffy. Oh, it was so good. Oh good, bakers. Yes. good bakers. Good bakers. <laughs> so um, they kind of like the one in the front – like looks back at the other one and leans back and says something uh, really quietly. It's difficult to hear, especially with the like rush of the water and the sort of like backdrop of all this. And they, they kind of stand up to be out of the sort of like defensive position that they had adopted before. And they kind of like stand more tall and like officially in a way, or just kind of like taking up a normal stance. And they look over at you cookie and they say, you know about the stone, the crystal, they look back to you, Fergus, and they say, did he send you here for it? The the crazy man spoke of many things. I took no 
uh, value in his words. I just seeked out someone who might have good merit to see this man punched. Oh my God. <laughs> you would be doing everyone a service if you were to get rid of him. We're going to have to move the artifact now. It's been safe here for centuries. It's very dangerous. Especially now. Uh, at I guess uh, at this this point, um, obviously Fer- Fergus has been against the team at this point, but Fergus kind of like looks over at Cookie and are like, I think these people need her help. And trying to like coax her to like, be on our be on his team in this in this issue. <sighs> <laughs> How we're all reacting. Um <laughs> Do I have the ability to cast my message cantrip? I don't know if I have the right material or components. Um your sorcerer, right? Yeah. I mean, so I assume, do you have, I think you're, you, when you made your character, you should come with a component pouch. I'm not oh, going okay. to keep track of resources. Like people okay. can use arcane focus to replace resources. Some people get really into that and like go and they, they get back to town and they buy the, the spoon and the piece of marble they need to cast Mordecai in his magnificent mansion. I assume if you have learned that spell, you have found the stuff you need for that. Okay. Yeah, so you can cast your yeah, you can cast whatever. Can whatever I you cast, have on your spell list, you can cast. Yeah, message uh, mm-hmm. to Cookie because I'm around the corner, hidden mm-hmm. still, and ask her to ask them more about the artifact and what, like, why they are protecting it and what it can do. Can I stay hidden? <laughs> I mean, I think I think more. I think he's hidden as well. The message cantrip is a secret message that goes into her head. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's like a whispered. Oh, and it, okay. yeah, Direct he doesn't line. even have to have line of sight on her. It's just a creature within range. Yeah. And since he's already familiar with her, he can easily do it. You hear Morthos, you know his name, voice in your head, asking you to ask about the artifact. And you have this sense that like nobody else heard it because it definitely didn't come from your ears. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, for Fergus is still looking at you expectantly, kind of like with a signal that yes, we're, you're with him or sign that maybe you're still trying to help who he thinks is crazy man. We were sent to get this artifact for a ritual that uh, supposedly will help save things. I'm talking, she's talking yeah. to the elvish people. I think I think mm-hmm. at that that point, Frigus kind of takes a like slight step away to be like, if they're if if she's throwing in with them, I'm stepping away. Of I'm not with them. Gotcha. Okay. So body language, like stepping away, like you're like no. Yeah. Okay. But I am will. I do want to know more about what this artifact is. Could you please tell me more information? It came from the sky, and the humans took it and performed magics on it that (sighs) the bonds, the barriers between planes are thin here. It is easier to access other planes. And for people who wouldn't normally have the ability to travel amongst the planes, they can use it to open portals. It's not a portal, it's more like tearing a hole in a wall. It's difficult to seal those back up. They've done it before, so we took it. So you're just protecting it? He already tried to take it once. We lost someone. But he lost three of his. He was by himself, so we thought we could get out before he came back. But it seems he tried to send someone else. What is the name of this wizard? He didn't give us his name. What does he look like? Is it the same like wizard? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bear says, did he look like a... <laughs> did he look like... The- <laughs> he looked like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. It's difficult to tell with humans. He seemed old. Uh, white hair. 
He kept a clean appearance, but you could tell there was something odd about it when he spoke. We don't know how he found us. Hmm. For for I guess uh, asks um. Did you see the sparkles in the sky this evening? Sparkles? We wouldn't call it a sparkle. This is the night when the (laughs) event is supposed to happen. I'm sure it did. We were unfortunately unable to witness it, and we're instead making preparations to relocate. What event? Do you want to know the significance of it, or do you want me to describe it to you? <laughs> I, I the significance. Saw, I saw it happen. I don't know what it was. <laughs> what it means. The old gods. Ours. And they kind of like nod to you, Cookie. Sometimes heralded. New ages? With such things? We believe... Shantea is at work and that she is bringing new life to things. Shantea would be a very well-known deity. She's like farming fields and fertility and very much like would easily be something druids would follow. Is a portal already open? No. Okay, guys. I like, uh, Fergus looks over a cookie and be like, I think we I think we won. <laughs> <laughs> but a portal is supposed to open and we need to prevent it from opening cuz apparently bad things will happen. Is that true? Asking the elvish people. No. This weakened the already weak barriers and it would be very easy for someone even so untalented as he to Remove the barriers between planes and invite something or travel to them. He Hmm. seeks it for that reason. I think I think I'm obviously already like uh, I'm against crazy person. So anybody who's against crazy person, he's for. But he um, he he does. uh, I'm going to roll inside to just like Uh, see, see if it sounds good. This was 13. the point at which I was going to say, keep in mind that, like, however convincing I might be right now, your characters can still, like, yeah. not trust them, can roll insights, can do whatever you want. Yeah. And while while with a lot of checks where it's, like, roll investigation, I'm like, okay, a couple people can roll, but everyone doesn't get to roll investigation. Insight is a personal thing, so you can all roll if you would like. I'll roll it. Okay. I don't Nine. Know. I don't know what they're saying. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> they're speaking in common right now. Yeah. But yeah, you're a bear. Sorry. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe he, maybe he, he, she just gets a feeling about them. Yeah, like, they make really good bread. <laughs> <laughs> Cookies good, and Cookie makes good bread. They yeah. make good bread. Maybe they're good. Yeah, bear. I you want to see if you? I have. Oh, you're just like go, I, I go like bear em. or go bread. I like them. Like I like Cookie. Cookies definitely doesn't really know what to do because yeah, maybe I mean, the guy who sent us there it has bad intentions. Cookie, you have the instinct to try to discern their intent. You're not familiar with either of these parties. Uh, Mm. You know, where he seemed kind of like scattered, they seemed calm and put together. Um, Mm -hmm. But like, they are not, they're not being twitchy. Um, They are speaking sincerely, but it's hard to say whether or not like what they're saying is true. Um, They don't appear to be shifty, but you know, if someone's a good liar, they're not going to be shifty when they're lying. So. It's kind of like, it's really hard to discern. When you do an inside check, you don't, a lot of people say, you can tell they're lying. I think that's silly because that's not how insight works. Um, you pick up on body cues, right? So Fergus, you're looking and you're like, their eyes seem sincere. They're speaking sincerely. They seem to have, you know, they have similar goals to you, which makes you perhaps more inclined to trust them anyway. But everything about them seems to be sincere and they haven't attacked you, even though you all came mm-hmm. and like invaded their home, presumably. Yeah. So, you know, it's like everything about them seems very sincere. Uh Fergus yep. Fergus uh looks at Cookie and kind of softly says Cookie, you and your people are noble, honorable people. I am with these people. I don't want to make an enemy of you. So, wow. Are you with me or not? Um 
do I try and persuade? Can I roll a persuasion and see if that? Sure. Seventeen. Ooh, I'm very Ooh. persuasive. Yeah. Yep. He's making mm-hmm. a convincing argument. Persuasion is not mm-hmm. charming. It's not mind control. I mean, you can feel about it however you want to. Persuasion doesn't mm-hmm. automatically win people over. But he makes sense. It sounds convincing. No, she absolutely. No. She's definitely leaning a little bit more towards the elvish people right now. I think I think also like I'm I'm kind of moving so that I'm kind of standing with them when I'm kind of like, especially uh, as, as I may be moving, I'm kind of, you know, my move away from Cookie when she was like, we're with the wizard. I kind of moved towards them to kind of, kind of like, yeah. hey, I'm uh, facing away from you. So I'm kind of looking for cues where she's kind of like, hey, I'm also going to be chill now. We're, we're, okay. we're cool. If you move too f- close to them, they do kind of like start to move back. But I, if, but if you're just kind of generally like circling around, yeah. like casually, then they're yeah. just going to kind of like be aware of that and acknowledge it. Yeah, it's it's more of a like where I'm facing in relation to kind of like where where if I am. There's a line team-wise. drawn in the sand. Yeah. I'm on this side. Yeah, yeah like, okay. like if we're if we're if if people are drawing swords, we know which 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 way I'm facing. Um, is Cookie, I, are you like more relaxed now? Would you say? Because I guess, uh, did I persuade you to kind of be chill around yeah. them? Okay. Um, okay. I guess that's where we're sitting. How, how's the hallway feeling? Uh, I think this might be about to be D&D Civil War. <laughs> first. <laughs> 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 I, I I don't know though. I uh, we've got I'm not, a bear. I'm definitely not persuaded <laughs> by these elves. I mean, and and I I don't think Fergus is even aware that they they found their way to him because they're stealthy out at the door. So yeah, I'm no one Fergus no one knows even know. we're here. Yeah, there's like Cookie a distinct knows. absence of them. You know that you had two other people that were traveling with you, and they don't seem to be in this room. So you don't know what might have happened, but they're not there. Yeah, Cookie would probably have an idea because she just got mm-hmm. a message from them and would probably put two and two together. But right, um, do you mm. would you relay that information to? For, I guess I don't know where your your uh, loyalties are lying right now. So, um. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I think He's confused. I think I'd ask Rakuzin like, what? What do you? What is your current? You know, we're both in the hallway Dude, whispering. What is your thought? I still think they're not up to any good. I think they've said a lot of suspicious things. About just opening a portal, or it's not even necessarily a portal. It's a tear in the fabric of the universe that can't really be patched. That doesn't sound good. So yeah, and the the other guy told us that we need the crystal in order to stop the tear. Yeah, and they're saying you, they need the crystal to make the tear happen. Yeah, and they seem to think that the tear is going to be good. They well, okay. Here, well, here's my question to the to the TM is that like they said that it was for this goddess, right? And we're supposed to know this goddess. What was the name? Vilnus said that uh, Temple of Selene had found it and had cleansed it and was like using it for like good rituals and um, like closing things like this, and that it was stolen. They said that the celestial event was related to, they believe, the workings of Shantea and that this crystal had been used by the humans to open rifts, that they they took it because they were closing them um, and it's, like, difficult to do and so they've been protecting it. So it's, like, two very converse, like, two very opposing stories. So bo- both people are saying that they're trying to close the, the rift, basically. They so the elves are saying this is what opens them, or this is a way that people who are weak with magic can open it. Yeah. And Vilnus has said, no, it's going to open. This is the only way we can close it. So I wanna float the idea to Rakuzin that we should try to destroy the crystal. Hmm. That's not a bad idea at all. I I I'm I am in. I like the idea. I don't know how we do it. But I, I think we but should. But we try. need to get our hands on it first. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. 
Fer- Fergus asks Fergus asks the elves uh, what he what they need uh, us to do. L- looking looking kind of like the entire time, not a hundred percent sure if Cookie's on his team. Just kind of like looking expectantly, like, "What do you need us to do?" Delay the wizard long enough, we can leave. Do you think he's coming here? I'm sure he followed you. He didn't exactly know where we were. He would probably not have found this entrance. He didn't find us when he tried to chase us here last time. At that point, uh, I guess I guess Fergus is kind of like eyeing the entrance, kind of like 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 could he be already here? Is he is he on his like way, like looking? Uh, can I do a perception? I get. Uh, that Are you po- looking for villainous? I'm looking for villainous. I'm I'm guessing I'd probably see the the two boys in the hallway if I roll good, but I'm looking for signs. Of- They're not in line of sight. Okay. So- Unless they have like peeked their head around the corner. Now, if you wanted to try to like hear <laughs> them talking, nope. uh-uh. yeah, yeah. If you wanted to try to hear them talking, you could do a perception check for that. Um, I'm more looking. Yeah, I'm looking for signs that the the baddie is here or on his way. Okay. Uh, may, maybe listening for like signs. Yeah, of just him. like panic, it, reflexively looking around. Yeah. Like, oh shit. Look, okay, looking yeah, sure. like, can I hear him in the hallway? Is he? Is yeah. is is there the sounds of evil? Has he been here this whole time? <laughs> Am I him? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that'd be a blunt <laughs> Shit. Seventeen. Ooh, my I'm saving oh, my good fuck. rolls for when I have to battle Teddy. <laughs> yeah. Um So you kind of like reflexively look around to like assess a situation, to look for danger. Yeah, as a ranger, you're used to kind of keeping a general like beat on your surroundings so this is kind of like that eagle eye taking a look around the light source is behind you it's casting shadows this direction there's no there's no light source coming from over there because you both have dark vision right are you a human uh recusin oh i'm a half elf half elf half elf that's what it was um there's no source of light over there it's difficult don't hear anyone Talking, you know, hear the sound of footsteps. You kind of like look around. Um, the whole floor is kind of like wet, and there's like moss in little bits. So it's not like there's a layer of dust where you can look to like look for footprints for someone who's invisible. You don't remember seeing anyone following you as you were all were traveling through the forest, but again, you, you weren't like necessarily looking. So it's like hard to say. You know that you had two companions who aren't in this room. They could have left. They could be. They could have tried to cross the water and been swept away. They could be in the doorway. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Um, but you are absolutely certain that you have listened and not heard, that you have, because um, they had stopped talking at this point. Right. So unfortunately, the like, um, I'm because I imagine that conversation was that they were having, like, do you trust them was going on while the other conversation was happening? It's not like they let you guys finish and then had a quiet conversation in the hallway when there was no sound to cover it. So giving the benefit of that doubt, I assume that those things were going like on at the same time. And when you stop to listen, everyone like the ball has kind of dropped and everyone is that like the tense moment of quiet, except maybe Bear, who's like munching on whatever other food that is being found. And there is just like tenuous silence. Uh, Fergus uh, pulls out his uh, short sword, knowing that like the bad guy's on his way, like and could be here. So he's just like kind of ready, like um, ready to defend. I guess these new people. Um, We're when going he, to leave. When he does that, he kind of is like, "Might I ask your name if I am to fight for you?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a tradition of not giving one's true name where we come from. That's not suspicious at all. It's <laughs> not. People do that. <laughs> <laughs> yell that from the hallway. Do you really? No. Do you actually yell that from the hallway? No, no. Okay. No. Just, the fall. In your head, you're just like so good. <laughs> Out of character, because this is probably funny for people who know, but if you don't know, in the Feywild and in places like the Hells and stuff, giving someone your true name could give them power over you. Mm. Well, and I get, I get that guess at that point, uh, Fergus straight out asks um, Cookie, will you fight with me? 
as in not like oh, against God. me, but you know, with me. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, she doesn't want. It has crossed my mind, like, if they're just protecting this thing, why didn't they just, and it's so bad, and they're not doing anything with it, then why don't they just destroy it? That actually did come to my mind before you guys brought it up, so that's why I'm like... Are you going to ask them? Sure. (laughs) So, Cookie, you know, is talking to the elves. She's like, so if you guys aren't doing anything with the stone, and it's so dangerous, why not just destroy it? It is very difficult to destroy items that have been enchanted with a magic essence. But it's so dangerous. What's the point? I can't destroy it. I can sense magic about you. Magic is tangible and intangible. And when its essence is infused with mundane items... They become strong, durable beyond any creation should be. It makes it very difficult. And when a material is foreign to you and from another plane or place or realm, and perhaps infused with deific energy, as well as having a potent magical aura, it's... We've tried. We couldn't destroy it, so we tried to protect it. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You can make an insight check if you would like. Sure. Okay. Can 17. I also? Yeah, sure. Anyone. 15. So 15, 17, 17. Um, they're Shit. speaking softly. They're speaking earnestly. There seems to be sincerity um, equal to before in their tone. Uh, they don't appear to be shifty. In fact, there's a bit of like, there's one of them that hasn't spoken yet. They look slightly older than the other two. Elves of a long time. It's hard to tell exactly how old they might be. As an elf, that's pretty like, you could look at someone and they could be 400, they could be 700, and unless you know them, uh, or they give some sort of cue with some sort of like learned wisdom, um, it's, it's difficult to say what experiences one might have had. This one looks like visually even older than the other two, meaning they are probably very old for an elf. And they look almost, when you're talking about why didn't they destroy it, they look almost like defeated um, when you say that cookie. And so, and Fergus too, um, you're both able to like probably perceive this older one. Now you, uh, Rakuzin, don't know that they're older because you haven't looked at any of them yet. You just hear, you hear a sincere tone and you hear like earnest speaking and like a plea for help. The two of you see this one that looks markedly older, look like defeated and almost like ashamed. Um, okay, so these guys are from the, the Feywilds. Uh, the- well, you don't know where they're from. Is there a thing that I could tell that would make me go, yes. Uh, history? These look, history? Um, if they, if, well, I'll tell you. Make the roll. <laughs> Dirty 20. Before I give you the conditions oh. and give it away. When they said, where we come from, it is unaccustomed to give someone our true name, and then they were just kind of quiet after that. It occurs to you that powerful druidic magics um, from elven-esque type creatures could easily be from the Feywild, and it seems reasonable to assume that maybe that's why they know so much about portals and going between planes and things like that. So maybe they are from the Feywild. Um, I guess I go to Cookie and I'm like, I think these are Fey, fey Elves. <laughs> I don't know what the proper term yeah, is, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 see if that information means anything to her, like if if that's a cool thing for her. They're from the Feywild. Maybe you know they know those other bakers. They don't. Oh. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> yeah. Are we basically kind of at the juncture where Cookie, Fergus, and Bear, well, Bear's like, food's great. Um, Cookie and Fergus are like, maybe we should 
go back to him and leave them alone and maybe try to let them get out of here. And the two yeah. of you are like, nah, these people are lying. We definitely want our money because we want to bring that guy that stone. All right. Here's here's the thing. Earlier, I straight up did like this because I. it hurts me to think, but I'm pretty sure Fergus was right about who the villain was the whole time. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I hate everything Ooh. about it. I hate it so much. <laughs> I don't, oh, oh, it feels gross, dude. <laughs> it feels so wrong, <laughs> but I think he was right. How do you feel, Morthos? I still maintain that he was going to get us killed. Uh, he, <laughs> like, oh. Absolutely. I He's still alive only out of sheer luck. And I still think, uh, yeah, maybe we shouldn't. Now that they've said the stuff about destroying the crystal, maybe we shouldn't try to destroy it since it sounds like it's pretty, yeah. you know, hard to do and we're not going to be able to. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like you can try. You probably won't do any better than they did. You can certainly try. <laughs> but mm -hmm. my general thought is they don't know we're here yet. We're here and supposedly uh, the guy from town should be following shortly. So we should probably be... Rakuzin and I should probably try to intercede you know that and like run into him before everybody else does so yeah. you are you believing the elves I, I am yeah i think we're we're all on the elves team we're on the we're on the crystal could be destroyed not you are on the uh the fergus team i believe is what we're calling it <laughs> the original team <laughs> oh wow Yes. I'm on Team Bear. Yes. Team Bear. We've we've always been on. Where's team that bear. bread? <laughs> Again, that That's bread. all I really team want. Team Bread. So, uh, we will pick back up next time, right after Mercuse and Morthos. You turn, making the decision to try and go intercept Villainous. Now that you're on the side of the elves that you have just met. You're creeping your way through the hallways. There's still the din of water in the background. It seems to be muffling your footsteps well enough. And you reach the point of this open room, and Rakuzin, you almost hear additional footsteps that you didn't, that you are sur sure did not come from the two of you. And as you glance around, you don't see anyone, and you see footsteps in the mud stop as you stop to look around. And you get the sense that whatever's over there is either worried about being noticed or has noticed you. And that's what we'll pick back up next time. <laughs> I can't dun, believe dun, dun. I can't believe Fergus was right. <laughs> <laughs>